Welcome to the True Geordie Podcast. Sponsored by Slash Football. Sponsored by Budweiser. No, we haven't actually got Make it, it very clear it's not Budweiser. It's, not Budweiser. it's Slash Football. No, it's slash Football. And then on alcohol, I just kind they're of a want, YouTube channel. It'd be cool to have an American sponsor. Maybe we could just say Slash Football in American okay. accent. Ready? One, okay. two, two, three. Sponsored by Slash, slash Football. Football, football. All the time, every day, all the way. Crime never, football never sleeps. Good. Crime never pays. Yeah. Slash football. Yeah. The voice of young football. Where the big boys play. Uh, check the links below um, yeah. if you want to subscribe to Slash Football. Slash football. We're welcome. Welcome. Slash. Check them out. Check them out. And um, yeah, on with the podcast. Mm. Oh, does my podcast offend you? Huh? Does it offend you? A little bit, yeah. Uh, it's offending many people, apparently, this podcast. Um, I don't understand why. I mean, I, do, I absolutely understand why, but I don't understand why. What, what do you mean? I mean, I understand it, but I'm sort of here, I'm like the, the guy, you know, the little voice in your head, like the conscience one. The, well, like this is like, I'm Pinocchio. Yeah. And I'm just... Uh, and I'm Jiminy Cricket. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you, don't fuck girls too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what I mean. Is I this... really wish they'd bring out a children's version for like young lads like that. Well, just... <laughs> like, Don't stick it in their ass unless you have permission. <laughs> I mean, in many ways, that would be one of the Ten Commandments. That is really sex education. They've got it all wrong, and all the diagram. Jiminy Cricket would be the perfect man for and the Pinocchio job. Pinocchio has a dick as a nose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And every time he lies, it gets mm. a little bit bigger. Yeah. No, because, no, he should have a massive nose when it starts, and every time he lies, it gets a little bit smaller. Mm, then punish him for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, really, the only person who's getting punished is the woman in that scenario. But oh anyway. No, I mean, he is. And But the, the problem for me is, if I stopped you every time you said something offensive, we'd have a five-hour podcast, all right? <laughs> That's the problem with good, it. Good for the uh, adverts, though. Champion. Yeah. I mean, mm. at the same time, also, there'd just be so many people in the bottom going, he's such a leftist dick, I can't believe oh, it. Oh, no. People are starting to love you. I like that. I like that. People are, there's a, you've got a cult following now that people are like sworn protectors of Lawrence in the comments. I like that. Shout are, out to them. Yeah, there are people in the comments below who just go, leave him alone. Leave him alone. Yeah. He's my Lawrence. Yeah. Um, you know. Thanks, mum. You're, you're not going anywhere. That's it. Yeah. You are Although some people do have the feeling that in about 50 to 60 episodes, you're going to replace me with someone else. I love when people make really absolute predictions about yeah. something. I get a feeling How, that in about 50 to 60 episodes, Lawrence will go. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Must, not only that, but you'll get rid of me. It's not that I'll leave of my own. Of my own uh, I want to say, right, the thing is, in this industry. Yeah. Not many people who you can trust. No. I trust you. I, I would literally give you my bank details. I'd mm-hmm. I know for a fact that you could, you'd could. you never fuck me over, no, no. matter what. I wouldn't so take I, your money. You're not going anywhere. Yeah, I refuse so. money for this podcast because... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I, it, it is technically payment. Um, yeah. That burger and fries was... That was payment for... That's me. a really good point, yeah. yeah. Um, so we've been asked what we're going to talk about this week uh, to talk about diving. Dive, we've always said, and we've said it for a long time, diving is a great subject. I know fuck all about it. The people listening probably know a about little, Maybe a little that bit of scuba and stuff. I mean, yeah, yeah, maybe you've been scuba diving. Everyone's got that one mate who's into scuba diving who thinks he's like a... Yeah. Yeah, he's like, yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm he's, he's got the tan there yeah. and there. Mm, mm. And you know he's a scuba diver and on his feet. <sighs> all right, mate. So is it... Is, were you a scuba diver? Is that what you no, were? That's, that, scuba diving, so that's like, you know, where you see on people holiday. on holiday yeah, yeah. and they're like, they hey. got this snaps out and that. It's, it's really You're... having a lovely time. No, this is horrible. Okay. This is not scuba diving, fun, paddling along, looking at the fishes. Okay. Um, were there any fish? The little fucking mermaid swims past with her tits out. It's no. not that. No, this no, no, no. is heavy duty equipment on you, deep sea diving, working underwater and often muddy black water where you can barely see anything. Sounds different to, to say, a sandals holiday. Definitely yeah. it's not something I would put on a magazine cover and it, say, it, you know, wish you were here. Yeah, in the back of your head, there's not like, I've had the time of my life yeah. sort of going. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Some of the worst times of my life. Really? In diving. What so? What is what? What's deep sea diving? Do you go right to the bottom? Yeah, well, basically, yeah. Um, up to a point of how far you can go without dying. 
and you you're know, not. There's a, there's a limit, yeah, because obviously the human body can only withstand so much pressure. But you don't. Yeah, I mean, I'm quite aware of that. I can obviously withstand more than most. I was going to say. Yeah, I just literally go on the Titanic and just hold up all the pressure. No, um, if only you were there. So like an air hold diver. Hold the door. An air diver. Uh, can, you can breathe air mm-hmm. down to about 50 metres. Okay. Any deeper than that, and you would have to do what's called saturation diving, what's that? which is where you don't breathe air anymore. You breathe a combination of helium and oxygen. and you know it's Why? A, because basically at that point, you, air is, would be too much concentrated too for dense. you. Too dense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so they found a way around it so that they can pressurise you for long periods of time mm-hmm at that um, depth and you can spend like a month working at, you know, 100 plus metres, for example. Let's just do a a boring definition. So what you did as your job was going out to the middle of nowhere in the middle of the sea or the ocean. Mm. The sea and ocean are the same thing. It's just we name them different things, right? We're we're rattling off names trying to sound like we know what we're talking about. I've been been in the sea. I've Mm. been in the ocean. They both felt the same to me, Mm -hmm. but probably different to you. You then went to very deep depths Mm. wearing... You weren't just wearing scuba gear. You were wearing like, like heavy kit. Like, yeah. um, for example, so you'd have a dry suit on, mm-hmm. then you'd have a jacket on with your bottle on the back, which is in case of emergency. In case you need a drink. You would then tap into the bottle on your back for mm-hmm. the air. Um, but you have what's called an umbilical cord, and it's called that for obvious reasons. That's where you get everything you need from. So you get your electricity going into the helmet. Yeah. So because you can then talk to the guys on the ship. Yeah. Um, and the guys around you, presumably. No, you're only usually on your own. Your own. You're on your own for most dives. Yeah, you're not with anyone. Completely. Very, very rare. You're actually on the seabed with another person. Why is that? Um, it's just the way they do it. Often it's convenience sake. So you can only do one dive um, for a certain amount of time. Oh. So if you think you've got. It's hard to explain, but if you've got a, a ship there for a period of time and you have a job that needs doing underwater, you don't want to use all of your divers at once. You want the work to continue going. Got you. So you get one out, you put one in, you get one out, you put one in, and that's the easiest way to do it. Um, I've already, I already feel like we could just end there and we've learned so much about Yeah, so, but the reason for that is because um, when you've been pressurised at depth, yeah. Um, your body has to recover from that. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you can get what's called what some people might have heard of, which is the bends. bends. Yeah. Um, which I've seen pe- that happen before. Um, that can ki- and that it can kill, can kill it, and it yes. will kill you if you don't get depressurized properly. Right? Yes. So basically, um, you can go down pretty much as quick as you like. Um, hey, so your so preference, right? If I was going down, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, it's been known. Yeah. Um, so I would go head first, obviously down deep mm-hmm. into the wet hole. Um, 50 metres, and, and I'd fly down um, as quick as I like. But Did you, you have sink to, or? I, w- I would just bomb down me, me head first. No, but I mean, are you, are you when you swim, are what you swimming is, down a line? So yeah, is there often like a- you just pull yourself down the line. So you'll have air in your suit, you'll dump the air, and you'll just go down as quick as you want. But when you're coming back up, yeah. what happens is that air will then increase in yeah. your suit, and you'll have to dump it yourself. But long story short, you have to be very careful of how quickly you come back up yeah. because otherwise um, everything will expand and it can be a messy situation. But that, that looks very painful. Yeah, it looks it is painful. Like from what I can tell, the lad who I've seen having it looked like he was in fucking agony. <laughs> he looked like he was fucking really struggling. Like, do you know what I mean? And I'm not talking hangover bad. I'm talking like oh, he's going to die. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. And he was going to die. It's because it air literally expands inside. Like there's, there's little bob. Bubbles of air that go mm. down your veins, and that can that just kills you. Basically, mate. Huh? Have you ever had anything like that? I haven't, luckily, because I was always a chicken shit when it comes to doing that. Like I was like, you know, if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna wrestle with a shark or something. I'm going out in style. Yeah, there's no point. Going I don't out think getting killed by a bubble in the brain is really how I want to go. No. So be careful, be safe. So there was you, your, and then what are you doing on the bottom of the sea? And it, I mean. Should we take it back to the start of how, how it all sort of took off for me? What, yeah. We'll, we'll go from... So I was in a point in my life where I was sort of struggling for a sense of direction, sense of purpose. Like many young lads probably right now listening to this will be. You sort of think, what the fuck am I going to do with the rest of my life? I, I said I was expected to decide what I want to do at 14. It, by 1920, I still hadn't worked it out. I'm on YouTube and I stumble onto this video, ironically, on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, this video of these two divers um, working together 
and it was cool. The music was cool. It was very James Bond. Okay. And I'm like, mm, oh, that looks good. That looks like it's dangerous. Mm-hmm. It's bound to be high paid. It's in the oil industry. Yeah. I, I could get into this. I, 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 I fancy a bit of this. So they I look started like my doing type research. Of men. Yeah, this yeah. not 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 that. Yeah. What? I, don't I started know. doing research, and I found out that they get paid good money. What's good? Like what's good? Between um, you know, five hundred to a thousand plus pounds per day. Wow. Some of these lads are on um, around about that area. Uh, what they don't tell you is obviously there's another side to the story. Not everyone is in that situation. But anyway, I looked into it, and it's a little bit like university to go and do the course. Yeah. Um, it's a similar sort of fee. And I went to the very north of Scotland to yeah. where Ben Nevis is, um, a place called Fort William. Yeah. Now, Fort William, there's like a post box, um, a pub, a church, and a diving school. Lovely. And a petrol station, I think. Yeah. So um, not a lot. I went up there and they promise you the world, this diving school. They're like, we're going to t- turn you into the best diver. We do the best diving training and everything. And I sort of bought into that. I was like, yeah, all right, it, this sounds like the dog's bollocks. I'm in the right place. Mm. What they teach you is how to get in the water. They don't actually teach you how to become a skilled underwater diver who's actually able to accomplish anything in the water. It's basically a fucking scam that they're running. Right? But luckily for me, before I got into diving... I had a mechanical engineering background and and, and understood right. a lot of the jobs that they actually wanted me to do when we got down there anyway. So I, I was lucky, but a lot of the lads were just fucking lost under the water, to be honest. They, so we get, we get there and they are like, right, we want you to get in the water. Just, Wait, who? The, the diving school. They right. basically throw you in the water pretty quickly. Right. You know, you do a bit of revision. There's a lot of technical sides of it to understand, passing exams, but as you can imagine... Judging by what I've said about school, not really what I wanted to be no. there for. I wanted to get in the water. I wanted to do something. I wanted, all right. The first time I got into the water, I'd never, ever done a proper dive before. Right. And the water they had in their own tank was straight from the sea. Um, Great. They, I didn't have any gloves on. I was in a dry suit. And I just got in the water and I thought, shit, I fucked up here. Why? It's just, it's fucking freezing and I can't get control of myself. And a lot of that was because I didn't understand how to work the suit. I didn't understand buoyancy and all of these little things. And my hands, I just weren't used to being that fucking cold. Mm -hmm. Eventually that just became total normality. And now me resistant, well, you know what I'm like. I'm the only person in London right now fucking who isn't wearing a fucking coat. Yeah. But at the time I was just a bit like, fucking hell, I'm not used to this. As the weeks went by, I I realized that, a lot of the lads there were for, for there for totally different reasons. Scuba diving. Well, some of them had done a little bit of scuba and thought, yeah, let, let's try this out. Some of them knew what they were getting themselves into, had families who were already divers uh-huh. and were going to walk straight into a job as soon as they got out. Because diving, what became very clear to me, a lot of it is who you know, not what you know. It's, a, it's very like the media. It's very like YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. So anyway... I. And some of the characters there were... Do you get much money for views in diving? Were strange, right? Okay. Some of the characters there were weird. Like one lad was a uh, an American Marine and he was full Hard. into this, like... No, he, was, he was like really what, not what you'd expect from American Marine. So when I say that, you imagine John Cena. Yeah, yeah. He was like John Cena yeah. if, if you put him in that machine on Hun- Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Yeah. He was like a little five foot three version of John Cena. That surprised me. A, a small angry man. You uh, never see those. And, and you see... <laughs> Right, so we're, it, bearing in mind, he'd come from New York City, right? The Big Apple. He's come from, Manhattan. like, the literally the biggest city in the world yeah. to Fort William. Fort William is, the I think, the most rainiest place in the whole of fucking Europe. We're walking to the end of the pier in the morning. And he thinks it's wet And the there. rain is smashing him in the face. He's miserable. He's thinking, what the fuck have I done to yeah. deserve coming here? There's nothing around. You signed I'm, up for it. I'm looking at him. I'm going, hey, it's great, isn't it? It's fantastic, this, isn't it? And he just looks at us. The rain's killing him in the face. He just goes, man, this fucking place is hell on earth. And I was like, every day I took it upon myself to just wind him up just a little bit more sure, yeah. and a little bit more. And that sort of got me by because we, we, we had to spend every fucking day together. There was nothing to do. So I quickly found out that winding people up was going to really help me get through. It's just a release the, for you. The monotony, yeah. When okay. I'm not diving, other than looking after other divers, what should I be doing? Diving into the psyche of the people around Taking you. Good. The piss. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there was a couple of lads there who were going to walk into jobs, and um, there was one bloke. Was who- this US Marine guy going to 
walk into a job or was nah, he sort of like he, he was just there for he, he was one of these guys who just jumps from thing to thing to Got thing yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was just another thing that he wanted to do in his life was he hot was he a hard man though like was he a, was he, he thought he was crazy? If, if you slapped him he would have probably not known what not the fuck to do do you know what i mean but he had the persona but he really had nothing to back it up as i later found out uh when it all kicked off wait what um, all right more on that later yeah so any other stay listening any other questions? Well, I've got loads. I, it's just that I want to make sure we cover these in the right direction. All right. So it, how many people were on the course? And was it a big class? And was it, were they nice guys? Like, because it's, if it's a closed circle, very often it's sort of like, who the fuck's that? Yeah. Who the fuck's so that? What, Why are you here? So most of the lads there were pretty nice, but then it is, it's hard for me to sort of gauge who's really nice. And I've had this my whole life because when you're like a big lad, yeah. most people are a bit yeah, like, yeah. all right, I'm going to be nice to him. So I kind of judge people on how they treat the weakest of the group, not how they treat me. Okay. So there were some lads there who were like quiet as a mouse and really timid. Yeah. And then there was other lads there who were big, brash and cocky. Um, one guy who was an ex-copper. Yeah. Um, you just hope he gets the bends, don't you? Um, no, I, I, he was from my area. So I thought, you know, and he had a good 15, 20 year on me. And I thought he'd sort of take us under his wing because he'd done a lot more. But he was very like, he, he did help us out a little bit, but... He was a bit of a dick for the most part. Like now, I look at him as, a, as an older man myself. Now, like I, I've got, uh, I'm like nine years older than when I took this course. I kind of think if I'd been in his situation, I would have then Reached embraced out. me yeah, and yeah. been like, "How are mate? I'll look after you." Now, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. but um, yeah, there was a there was a couple of assholes, but it wasn't really a big deal. What, so, what was your day like when you were learning? Was it and was it like class and then the afternoon you go and do a little bit of diving? Basically, and yeah. Did they? Did they? Uh, give you food or do you have to cook for yourselves? Um, so initially um, I, I lived on my own, but then I realised that was going to be a right fucking chore. So I moved in with the uh, the lads. Yeah. They've got like a, um, a wing on the side of the school where you can all live together. Yeah, yeah. Not sure that was a good idea looking back on it because divers are mental, basically. Yeah. Like to want to be a diver, you've got to have something a little bit wrong with you. And I admit that myself. I'm just trying to get in this, the mentality of a diver. Well, for a start, you've actually got to be very good at switching off common sense and logic because when you're 50 you're to 100 metres, <laughs> you're only 50 to 100 metres. This is one of those things when I listen to this back, I'm going to laugh at you and I'm going to think, fucking bell end. All right. <laughs> when you're underwater like that and you're in pitch black darkness, yeah. it's very natural for your brain to think, <laughs> get <laughs> me the fuck <laughs> out of here. Or if you see something scary or something worrying happens or, or well, you don't even have to see anything. It's more the fact that the tide's ripping, you're holding on for dear life, hoping yeah. you can get the fuck out of there in a safe and sound fashion. Quite scary at times. So you've got to be able to switch off the danger in your head yeah. and think logically about what you've got to do right there and then. You've got to rem- it's almost like meditation. Well, you've got to no. be ignorant. You've got to be able to switch on ignorance as like much that. as you want. Good. Um, which obviously again, I'm very good at. Yeah, brilliant at that. What you're trying to do now is second guess the jokes that I'm going to try and I make. Knew, and I actually, knew what's no, I'm just quite interested. And actually, I totally agree with that ignorant side of things. That actually, that's that's probably a really valuable skill to have generally. Well, in general, what has stressing out and worrying ever accomplished? Nothing. Not it's stressing out and worrying doesn't achieve anything. Doing something about a situation does, it's and built the psychology industry. It's up. like when you see a penalty taker; the more they worry, the more they're likely to miss. In, in diving, awesome. you've got to be pretty cool, calm under under pressure because you literally are under pressure. So, do you ever think Gareth Southgate watches this show? If so, Gareth, get in contact because you're definitely not invited on. You boring cunt. What has worrying and anxiety ever done? Well, anyway, so a lot. Of the, I'm living with the lads. We get up in the morning. We have bait together. We learn about, you know, um, the diving table. So how long you can go for underwater for, how long you can be there for. And, and uh, the mechanics of, you know, biology, chemistry and everything that goes into it. Were you good at that? Uh, I hated it. I really, because I found it really boring. If I find things boring, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter how intelligent I am. As soon as I find something boring, no. might as well not even be talking to us. So I had to force myself to really drill this into my fucking head. Because what I wanted to do was be in the water. I actually really enjoyed that part of the job. I like being in the water because at that time, I'm in the diving course. The novelty hasn't worn off. Yeah. I'm enjoying, get, I'm getting a bit of a thrill out of it. And then when we get back at night, me and the lads will go out in the pub, we'll get pissed. Um, you know, but it's very, we all turn into like eight year olds. Yeah. So like in the middle of the night, me mates are like wrestling and things like that. Like I'm sharing a room with two lads and they're wrestling. Sure. And I'm like, what? With clothes on. No, naked. Brilliant. They're naked, right? And I'm, I'm not taking part in this. Don't even fucking insinuate that. All right. 
But at one point, one of my mates is at a physical disadvantage. How? He's getting outdone in the wrestling department. Sorry, is he getting bummed? He pops his thumb up the mate's arse who's on top of him. I mean, we've all done that. That is the kind right. of blokes I'm um, with. Like, and, and, and that's just a normal, that's a Tuesday. Sure. So what's a what's a Friday night like? You know what I mean? Drunken, naked wrestling, popping a thumb Pretty up much. each other's I'll tell ass. you what a Friday night was like. Actually, yeah. one one weekend we went out, Two me thumbs. and all the lads. We're, we're obviously mainly from England. Best, maybe. In, in the north of Scotland, William Wallace country, the yeah. Highlands, yeah. <laughs> um, painting your faces blue. Yeah. Freedom! No, um, and basically Scotland had played football or England had played football, I can't remember. Someone decides it'd be a good idea to sing the English national anthem in the pub. In the pubs. Brilliant. Pool cues come out. My mate's getting fucking swung on by two fucking Scottish lads. Yeah. Now, my mate wasn't like, you know, he wasn't really well equipped at the time. He didn't know what was going on. He can't pop a thumb up someone's ass now, can he? <sighs> So it was a different. He's mate. trying to get around the back of him, yeah. going, "I'll fucking take him down." So I'm like, "What the fuck?" So I'm, I put my pint down. I'm straight in, smacked one of them to the floor. The other lads fucking um, swinging the pool cue at us. I did a little bit of, little bit of Taekwondo, MMA, right? Muay Thai clinch, what? right? Grabbed him by the back of his head, put my knee straight into his fucking chin, and then I'm really fucking kneeing the fuck out of this gun. We're in like a um, a sports bar, so there's like a trophy cabinet, and I see a trophy cabinet, and I grab him, and he's already done, and I just looked at this trophy cabinet, and I, I just go to throw him towards it, and at this point, the copper, the ex copper, steps and goes, no, no, sorry, he's had enough, he's had enough. There's two lads in a heap on the floor with pool cues. I was like, game's over, lads, isn't it? Let's, uh, let's chalk that one up, finish it, finish it there. And you never went back to that pub, I'm guessing. No, we never went no. back to that pub. That was that. Did they not come and search for you or anything? Did the fuck me? I've just decked them. Right, up. yeah, good point. They're Thirty seconds flat. Right. So that was that was sort of yeah. It's very like it's like. Do you know what it was like? It was a bit like being in the army, just with less rules. Because and, and no no guns. Basically, thank, yeah. thank God. Thank yeah. God. God, imagine just, you near a gun. Yeah, just. I mean, the pool cues were dangerous enough. Let's yeah. be honest. I mean, imagine what you'd be like with the trophy. You know. Yeah, um, you'd be lethal. Yeah. Leave so uh, yeah, it was it was third place bronze. It was up it, in there, it was were, fun. It it was fun. You know, we got into some some great. mischief around Fort William. You know, there was um there was a bar made there. Of course there and, was, and as there always is. Of course there was. Um, yeah. If you're a woman, you might want to switch off now. Well, she, did she have a big ass? Did she? Or did she have? Did she have massive fake tits? She or actually, did she had liposuction on her face and it, put it back in? Or what? Something weird had happened to her for sure. Because the only people who have relationships with you are scarred. So go on. Oh my god, that's not very nice, <laughs> is it? Is it, Mister Fucking Nice Guy? Yeah, the sensible one, huh? <laughs> that was such me. The only people who have relationships with you are scarred. Hmm. No, come on. All these barmaids definitely had something wrong with them. Bit out of order. All right, yeah, the barmaids no. did. I'm not even sorry. The barmaids did. All right, fair enough. So she was... All I can see now is your head thinking, what can I say back to her, Tim? <laughs> I'm leaving that because I don't want to say... Because I'm going to take the high road this time, you cunt bag. All right, fair enough. All right, I'm the, I'm the moral high ground this time. And when I'm the moral high ground, you know you're fucked up. Anyway, yeah. So the girl had um, nothing wrong with her in particular. She was a petite in girl. In particular? The one thing that she did have about right, her that was here we go. was an extremely hairy fanny. Right? Right. And you knew this how? I just, because... Looked? Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, I haven't got that pot. Right. So I'm doing Jaeger bombs in the bar, yeah. and at one point I just said, what time do you finish? Next thing and I know... she went, I've got a hairy fanny, see you later. We're walking home, and we didn't make it to her place, because I stopped outside of a church... Yeah. And I bent that over on the railing, and I'm just giving it to her there and then. Mm, have some of that, darling. What, Enjoy this. What does the priest think? Big meaty dick in you. <sighs> um, don't even know where to start. She's taking the cock. She's of lo- she is. She's bloody loving it. Yeah. And I remember after I'd finished, Respectful look like. at her because um, we were. I didn't realise we were at the church until I'd finished because I was at mortal at the time and I was just in the moment. And then, and the then I looked go. up and I seen the church and I thought. Are we? We're not technically. This isn't. We haven't consummated a marriage yet. This isn't. No. And again, that's not how marriage consummation works. So. No, that's how it started, though. 
initially. What, fucking in the church? No, not in the church, but they'd fuck in front of everyone right after they got married. That was how you consummated When's that, that ever been a thing? Game of Thrones, apparently. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, that historically accurate show, yeah. that documentary, well, obviously as we the, call the it. the dragons seem real enough, don't yeah. they? No, but that's what they used to do, That's what apparently. she said. Um, so, yeah. When? So, um, give it to her. She loved it. Sure. Uh, but in general, it was it was a fun time. <laughs> um, and, and you know, I got the I got the certificate at the end of it. There you go. You're a diver now, mate. And I'm off to get my first job. Uh, <laughs> fucking hell, I've killed him. Jesus. It was a fun time. It was a fun time. What were the people like who taught you? Um, the people who taught us... Bell ends, to be honest, mate. Just I. They were divers. They were ex divers. They were, ex-divers uh, divers they, were they were basically ex divers who couldn't get any work at the time, basically. Which, which, when they were telling us the dream about you're going to get loads of work and yeah. it's a get rich quick scheme. And why are you here, I'm Gary? Like, why are you here again? And I should have realised then that there wasn't as much work out there as what they claimed was. Um, just trying to remember what else happened. Did anything? Quite a lot, I'd imagine. So then you finish school. What mm-hmm. happens next? Do you do so, you go back to Newcastle and go, great, now... Now you've got to get a job. So, straight on monster.co.uk. So a couple of my mates went straight offshore. Diving. St- straight away. Um, and I was sort of, oh, where's my... Oh, no, it's... Um, job. I'm not, I'm not friend, friends, am I not? All right, so I've got to go and get... Really? Get a job. Well, no, because it's, it's who you know, it's not what you know. Yeah, eh? but you know those people. So you're going to them, you're going, hey. There was no slots. There was two slots and they were taken. My my slot wasn't there. So I had to go and find a, a job. You've so, already had your slot by the sounds of it. Yeah, I filled that slot well and truly. Right. Two, two or three times. No, um, yeah, so yeah. Respectfully to the priest in the local area. See you on Sunday, Father. <laughs> father. Thank you. Father. Um, so I get my first job in a little-known town in Scotland called. called Greenock, which I went from the rain capital of Europe to the stab capital of Scotland, I think it was. Um, I go there, and I quickly realise that the money isn't what it was going to be. Um, it's a lot less money. It's just full of people who hate the job, hate their life, mm-hmm. The first man I met was the boss on the job. He really hated his life. How was he? He, uh, he was in his late 40s. Right. He was just miserable. He was telling me, it was my first day on the job, he was like, just get out of diving while you can, mate. Like, Brilliant. So I, Welcome I, to the game. I, I was like, uh, thank, thanks for that. Um, How much did you spend on this course, by the way? Did you spend a lot of money? Well, on we're it? talking uh, like degree level money. So, you know. For how long? Um, it, the, the course lasts about three months to get the certificate. Okay. So like I say, I get on my first job and I'm unaware that I had ve- been very much underprepared for okay. this job. So my first dive, I get in the water. It's night shift Brilliant. in in Greenock in Scotland. So that everything's pitch black. I cannot say a fucking thing anyway. You've got your t- can-, can of tartan paint in one oh, hand. Christ almighty. We're going under, um, under, we're working under a pier, basically. We're rebuilding a pier is what we were doing at the time. And they're like, just go in and, I can't even remember what they told us to do. Because when I went in that water, it had taken us a while to get a job. And in that time, I'd forgotten some of the things I should have been doing because I hadn't been doing them every day. You're just be holding your breath in the shower or something. Just, you know what I mean? Just basic things that, you know, that may, like, for example, if you were away from, you know, what what you'd directing for a good few months and you'd only had a few months training. Never out of work, me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks to me. Raise your profile. Yeah. Anyway, you you would be a little bit rusty. And I was a novice to start off with. So not only was I, I was a rusty novice. Brilliant. So when I got in that water, oh, it, it didn't go well. It did not go well. I, the, the tide was going a little bit um, and I was just getting pulled all over. I didn't know where I was. I was discombobulated. It went really bad. Are you tied on to something? So yeah. do, have you the always... umbilical goes straight to surface where someone's keeping a hold of that. So you've always really? got that. But I was panicking. I was I was frightened, to be honest with you. Like, I'm mm. not fucking scared to admit it. Like, I was 20 years old, lad, in a brand new job, and I was in the middle of the fucking sea at three o'clock in the morning. I didn't know my name, practically, let alone where the fuck I was. It wasn't a good fucking scenario. Now, most divers have had at least one dive that goes a bit like that. Yeah. And when it happens to you, you sort of hang your head in shame and go, all right, that's one to forget. But um, you're early on, so you don't know. You could be like, you, as far as you know, this is every the, other dive after. Yeah, that. basically. But I, I knew it had gone bad. Mm-hmm. I, I was aware. I thought this... Ca- I've achieved nothing. I've achieved nothing at all. What did you do? do? And what do you have when you're down there? Do I just, have- 
when you're down wrench. there, there's different things that I could have been doing. So um, if you're refurbishing like the jetty, what we were doing, you'd like blast all the, um, you know, the barnacles and stuff off of metal and, and clean it up nice mm-hmm. and that and things like that. But there's so many different things I could have been doing. But the bottom line is I was achieving fuck all that yeah. day. It was a nightmare. It was a terrible dive. It was the worst dive I ever did. Are they in your ear the whole time going, Bruh. Brian, yeah, you- I, I'm like, I don't know where the fuck I am, mate. I've got no <laughs> idea. I, I'm fucking really, and, and and to be honest, I'm breathing heavy as well because the panic's setting in. Yep. I'm getting pushed all over and I'm in the dark, in the water. And I, it's, it's fucking quite worrying, like, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? When you lose control underwater, it's very worrying. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, because you could die. I think... I was never going to die at that time. But your body. But in my head, I felt like that was what was going to happen. That was happening at that time. You got us out, and I think they just realised, all right, we've got a lad here who hasn't been taught fuck all. Another one from that college who's been taught nothing. Um, We should just stop taking them at this point, Rob. (laughs) But that was the only school that anyone could come from, Mm -hmm. basically. So they had to train us up, and they had to sort of let us know, all right, this is what is going to happen. And and when I got back in and I got my confidence, and Mm -hmm. it took a while, I started getting better, basically. Took a while. Um, what, you could get better, like you just, you, what, you learn to just dive better. In general, the- having confidence in the water, yeah. like getting from the, to and from the job, um, and basically learning the rope skills to tie yourself onto things when you're underwater so you don't get thrown off while using a tool like, um, you know, like a fucking a welder. Well, you do underwater welding and things of that nature. You, you need to be competent. Yeah, and doing multiple things at the same time. How do you learn that if you're alone? It, it's hard. People have to t- kind of explain it to you when you're up there and say, you know, when you get down. Well, yeah. what you want to do is do this and then do this and then do. But these are all things I'd never been taught. So great. It was a shitstorm to start off. Worth with. all that money. Well, I really felt like I'd been shortchanged a lot. Yeah, do you know yeah. What I mean? Well, you would, wouldn't you? Because you've gotten that. You've gotten to the place, and you're sort of like, I am ready. Here we go. Mm-hmm. <gasps> And you're in the water and fuck, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, fuck, I've got no idea what I'm doing. And actually, I think I'm dying. <laughs> and that's what they're hearing. Up on this. I'm dying. Oh, I'm dying. Me. I wish I had the recording <laughs> of that first dive because yeah. you'd fucking piss yourself. How, fr- <laughs> how frightened I was. Oh, like, no. I was panicking. Were, and were they all Geordies and Scots or were they sort of more over? Were they, were, you know, it, there like it, some it, Arabs in there? There was a, there's a strong Geordie lot of divers, um, but they're mainly offshore, but the lads were from all over mm-hmm. in this one. You were um, onshore for this though, because there's a pier. I was inshore for this one, yeah. And inshore is known as like the worst diving because you're doing what's called civil engineering where yeah, yeah. it's down, it's dirty, it's black. And it's it, not working on it's, anything it's exciting like, either. Well, yeah. So, like, one of the horrible things happened to us, because, like I say, I didn't know what I was supposed to be fucking doing. So, in in the first few dives, my dry suit split. I'm underwater, and it's filling up with freezing cold water. Glasgow water, right? Brilliant. Brilliant. At that point, I'm thinking, I don't want to get out and be like, poor me, my fucking dry suit split, because then it's a waste of a dive. Mm-hmm. Now, I'd only just got in when it happened. So I just rode it out for two and a half, three hours, just working. Freezing. Freezing. When I got out, that is the worst time in my life you could have ever asked me to send a woman a dick pic. My dick had... I think it was inverted by the time I got it. Bloody fucking hell. I, I, I'm literally just... <sighs> Fucking hell. And they and were going, they, Brian, you dick. <laughs> where has it got? No, yeah. they were looking at us going. <laughs> it's full no. They, they, they were looking at us. It was that bad. It was that bad. Like, I, I was literally, the, the suit was full of water. And I was like, I was walking like squelch, squelch, yeah. squelch. And they went, this is what really fucked us off. They went, what happened to you? Your dry suit split. I went, yeah. yeah. Fucking yeah. shivering. They go, should have fucking told them I would have got you out. Yeah. I was like. I'm hard. <sighs> you were down there for three hours. Yeah. They, to be fair though, it did actually gain quite a bit of respect because yeah, a lot yeah. of the lads were like, fuck me, he must have no, balls of solid rock. Man, he's, he lost his dick for us. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't lose his dick for nothing. No, um, <laughs> they called him Dickless Brian no, after that. Right. It's still there. It's yeah. fucking made a full recovery, mate. Don't Hashtag worry. Hashtag Dickless Brian. Me- All right. Many women have made, <laughs> have been very appreciative of it since then. It, it found a good few since homes. Since it was reattached, yeah. Since then. Um, partic- it warmed itself up. Glasgow was more than happy to have it. Trust I'm sure us it on was, that yeah. One. Very Fuck nurturing me. environment. Fuck me, mate. Your penis. Um, so, yeah. Such as yours. All right. We've talked enough about my dick. Yep. Full recovery. Nice well, and warm now. Yeah. If anything, it, it 
it was made stronger by that experience. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, yeah. <laughs> apparently. And that yeah. is, that's definitely true when you put your penis to the test in three hours of just freezing in, cold midnight water. An inspirational poster on the wall of your dick and what kill, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger <laughs> just below it. Can we can we move on? From Stop talking about posters with your dick on. No, because yeah, yeah. people have been complaining that my dick gets way too much airtime on this show anyway. Have you ever seen a shark? Uh, no. Oh. Uh, I have seen... I don't know what it was. I think it was a whale, to be honest, because it was a big moving, fast moving, like gliding object that was the size of a fucking bus. You must have abs, like you must have shat yourself. Just close my eyes, hold on to what I'm holding on to and just think, please don't fuck me. <laughs> just, <laughs> no, I, don't, like, I never think that they're trying to fuck you. No, I don't mean literally. Right. Okay. I mean, don't fucking kill me. Don't a horny whale. Me. Yeah, imagine that. Speaking of dicks, <laughs> sperm whales. It's going to eat him. No, it isn't. It's going to fuck him. It's mounted him. No, um, so yeah, that was that was pretty bad. Um, oh no, it's seen his dick and it's gone away. It, it was it was it was awful. Were you ever worried that there were like you know like mysterious animals under there? And stuff? No, I never thought of that because it's so pitch black you can't even fucking see anything anyway. And it's well, like you- <laughs> it's, it's that ignorance that I developed of. They just you zone out. You're there for three hours, and you're brrr, you're either drilling on something, yeah. you're fucking spraying um, like high pressure water. Um, you you're doing a quite a dangerous job as as well. Mm-hmm. So you kind of focus on what the fuck you're doing. You can't be worrying about. I mean, the, the thing I saw more than anything was fucking crabs. And don't make the joke about that either, you little cunt. There was loads of crabs on the seabed, Shit. right? That's where you got them. All right. So anyway, at the end of the day, sometimes we go down with the net and just. Hoy a few crabs in, go back up, cook them for. Did you really? Tea. Oh, what were they yeah. like? I bet they tasted good. Decent, mate. Yeah. Well, fresh, aren't they? Yeah, fresh. Bit of lemon on that. Bit but of yeah, butter. there was there was some characters on that job as mm. well. There was the one lad. I told the story about the blue diamond. Yeah. The lad who gave us the blue diamond. Uh, he was called Rick. I'm yeah. actually going to say his real name because I don't even give a fuck at this point. He Got was Rick rolled. He was really weird. He he would piss the bed every single night. He would go out on the piss every night. He just find wherever, whichever port he was in, he'd find a local woman and just fuck the shit out of her, and then piss the bed next he, to her. I want to try man. I, well, the the first two times I met him, I met him twice. I'd seen his asshole twice. Um, strange man. For some reason, he just bend over and show people his ass. It was very weird. I walked in on him once in the in the lad's house. We had like six rooms what? in this house. In the bathroom, penis pump in action. Cracking his cock to try and make it bigger. What does a penis pump do? I, apparently, I mean, I've never used one, and I swear to God, he was fucking trying to make his dick bigger. What does it do? It's like, you know, on Austin Powers, where you see one, because that's the only time I'd seen one before was on Austin Powers, yeah. genuinely. And it's like, um, it looks like a fucking bong or something where you're high yeah. on the end of your dick. Yeah, don't and use he's it as fucking, that. Pff, 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 like giving and, it is the, it, and I guess it like sucks it up and sort of and, It makes it, it bigger yeah, or whatever. Yeah. He had a date that night, so I hope it worked out for him. Good well, luck. Well, predate he was doing this. I think so, yeah. Well, what was the... I, I've got no idea. He was a smelly cunt as well. He fucking stunk. If you're listening, you fucking stink, you little And cunt. you took Viagra off this guy. It fucking... That did work. That that did work that one smelly time. Smelly Viagra. Um, so, yeah, there were some weird kids uh, on the job... How but old were they? Were they? Were you all? Like- it was a mixture from twenty all the way to fucking fifty. Mate. And you all spoke English. Uh, yeah, all of us. Yeah. And in the diving game, is it is it is English the language? Pretty much. I mean, the, I'll go on to jobs where I've been foreign lands, um, but um, there was a, a lot of nights out. That, I think that's what I want to get across about. Brilliant. Glasgow, mm-hmm. Green Nick. A lot of nights out. A lot of getting on the boat seven because we worked seven till seven. And I would get on that boat after finishing drinking at like five. Hungover. And I would be just, uh, I feel sick just even thinking about it. Like, because I know how violently sick I was. Like, there was one time where I w- they deliberately, like, whoever's the worst is first in. That's yeah. what they would say as a joke. And I'm fucking first in, aren't I? Every time. And I'd been up fucking and doing all sorts that night. And I was fucking um, doing um, shots of this, that, and the other. And I just put the hat on, and the hat's like really close to your face. And it's like suffocating. Sick. You're breathing in your own breath a lot of the time. And you, when you, when you're ill, you want fresh air. Yeah. You want to no. So I'm sweating away. I'm working. After about ten minutes, I just come up. I say, take the helmet off. They took the helmet off because I wasn't very deep. I'm, I'm barfing. I'm barfing, and I just put the helmet back on. I went. I'll do as much as I can. Five more minutes, and I was like, right, that's me for the day. Like I'm fucked. And that happened too, too often to be honest. I think they got a bit sick of that at the end. So that's your first job. Yeah. 
what kind of jobs are you doing here? Like, you know, is this oil or is it because you said it you was, don't like the civil side? Yeah, it was that mainly civil engineering to start off with. So that's where you have to learn the trade, basically. In an ideal world, you learn how to dive in the civil engineering and then you go offshore and make the big bucks. A lot of people skip the civil bit and just go straight because for the big they've bucks. got mates and, and, and family in that and they're, they're very lucky. And so, the big bucks yeah. is that full of mean bastards? No, no. I mean, um, I think the whole diving industry is just, you know, full of a mixed bag of people. You get good and bad no matter what. But like, so I met one of the best lads um, on the job, which was the Tyne Tunnel job. Now, basically, in in Newcastle, we've got a tunnel that goes from the north side to the south side that you drive under. And they built another one of those to go alongside it. Um, And I was on that job, um, basically a tunnel that goes underwater sort of thing. So I actually swam through the tunnel that people now drive through. Um, And on that job, I met a lad, one of my best pals on there, um, who, you know, when you meet someone, a bit like me and you met, you you know, when you just click with someone, you're like, all right, I get this cunt. I know his sense of humour. We just got on straight away. And uh, we had a good laugh. On that job, someone got a bend and nearly died. Uh, he was an old bloke as well. He was pretty old to be getting into the game. He was in his like early forties or in something. In a river, yeah. I'm, what, what in the River Tyne? It's fucking deep, you know. How deep? A fucking pretty fucking deep. Well, like fifty meters. Well, I think it's not far off that. It must be. And you can get the bends from going down fifty meters and coming fucking up to right. You can. You can get the bends from all sorts. So anyway, we're fucking Anything? trying to save that cunt's Drinking life. Drinking Barocca too fast. We're trying to save that cunt's life, and um, the lad who saved his life happened to be one of my best pals. How did he save his life? We'll call him Jimmy, for the for want of a better Jimmy word. Jimmy the life right. saver. Jimmy. So Jimmy's a, a medic, a Is diver medic. He's taught, no, oh. he's taught in that sort of shit. So he saved this cunt's life, managed to pressurise him down and then bring him back up gradually um, in, a, in a chamber. Um, and I was there for that, but that was pretty dangerous. Like that was like, you're watching someone who could be fucking dying basically. Yeah. Um, but I met this kid and I got on really well with him and I got a lucky break right after that. And now he had been a Navy diver. And Navy divers is a thing of like, in the diving world, they get more respect. Why? Because it means something to be a Navy diver. You haven't just went and fucking bought a ticket on a course like I did. Yeah. You Don't get us wrong, what I did was pretty, oh, you know, and I had a few hard jobs and whatever, but Navy divers, some, it's quite a bit of prestige about that. You know, this, it kind of means something. Life's on the line. Um, and he used to sort of pass and fail people whether or not they became Navy divers. Um, and I knew I was going to get on with him when he told us a story about um, how the first girl mm-hmm. to ever become a Navy diver um, was going to be have to be put through by him. Yeah, and she was she was like a triathlon runner. She'd done. She was the first woman to ever complete the Royal Marines training, yeah. and she was like an animal. And um, he'd been told by the higher ups in the Navy, she doesn't pass this course. Wow, you don't let her pass this course. Why? Um, Just- they just got to, we're not having a fucking woman pass this course basically yeah. that was whatever it was passed down to him don't don't shoot the messenger no. not me being sexist yeah Royal Navy. not again anyway um, anyway so he goes and has a word with the lads who are on the course and he says look lads um, I'm going to have to fucking beast yous and some of yous aren't going to make it because she's not making it and they actually said to him don't worry about it we don't want to be on the course that a girl passes on so beast all you want what? Aye. So they all made an agreement that this girl wasn't going to fucking pass the course. Aye, this is one of my best mates who did this, right? But he didn't. But so, the point is that he he didn't want to do that. I mean, he. No, J- Jimmy is like. Um, do you still know Jimmy? I'm like very very good friends with them. I okay. mean, I keep in touch with them and that. Um, and uh, Jimmy basically, he understood what that meant because if a woman can do it, there's a certain thing about. It loses its prestige. It loses How? because women are physically not as strong as men. And the minute you say that this is achievable by a woman, it downgrades what it actually stands for in the eyes of many men. Not me. Yeah. I'm, women want to be a fucking diver. You crack on. Yeah. Right? I've got no problem with it. Yeah. But, there but was, in other people's eyes, oh yeah. not yours, it makes it weaker. Yes, it does. So basically, she comes out in a swimming costume because Cunts. they're going to do drills on the pools. She's got her. Um, well, she's not where she's hard. She's not coming out in a little he stringy said, thing, is he she? He said it was. Hey, she had a fucking good body on her. Now I tell you, <laughs> but she's not coming out in some stringy little thing. She's got, she's serious. She's a triathlon. Well, she was a fucking animal, but like she was in great shape, and because of that, you 
said she had a good body on her. Yeah, but I'm anyway, sure she was objectifying them all as abso- well. They had to go up and down this diving board, come swim full length of the pool, do underwater laps, and he said, "I fucking annihilated her." And just and 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 just when he, you know, you he, he thought he'd killed her practically because she she was exhausted. She fucking gives it one last fucking J.I.J. And he said, she comes out of that pool. She's sobbing her fucking heart out. She runs up round the fucking side, giving it the... Ah! And my mate just looked at her, deadpan. Mm-hmm. And he went, I know that this will be over in a few minutes. Because he knew that was the last she had. And she really gave it all she had. And then he just kept beasting that and beasting that until she fucking quit. So this was one of my best mates, basically, right? And that was passed down by the got the big wigs. I had to do that, so don't hate him for it. But anyway, yeah, I, but that's fucking awful. I know it's it's women have passed it since, though, right? I don't know, but I know that it wasn't under him. I can fucking tell you that, right? So he he's one of my best pals, and we got into a lot of fucking had a good laugh together. So I get off, I get a good opportunity. I go offshore, and I'm working on a job um, on a Sad. wind farm in Kent. Um, place called Ramsgate. Actually. Sounds extreme. A place called Ramsgate. It was a really cushy number. We're sending you to Ramsgate. It was a lot easier. <gasps> it was a lot nice, clearer water. You know, all right, the stains are still there, but um, in Ramsgate, off, off of Kent. Um, they're going to put up in um, in caravans, um, ideal. So I get off there, but they didn't put us in a caravan straight away. They put us in the house and there was if a the lad. caravans are rocking, don't come and There was a lad who was Am really right? annoying us in the house. Before and I was like, I really fucking don't like you. Mm. And I went out on a night out once, and I came back mortal drunk, and I was really pissed off, and I'd forgotten the key to the house. Yeah. And I kicked the door down, and I just kicked it clean <laughs> off the hinges, cool. walked in, and went what? to sleep. I went into sleep. Right, I went into work the next day, and they went, "Oh, uh, who kicked the door down?" I went, "Oh, it was was Alan." <laughs> it was <laughs> Alan. <laughs> he got kicked out of the house. Really? But anyway, they put us in the they put us in the fucking. Um, in this caravan. Did Alan not remember? Not He's a not, fucking bellend, though. I, I really hated this cunt. Anyway, surely Alan said it wasn't me. And I they don't went, know. People took my word for it, right? Luckily for me. Anyway, so right. he was a total dick. Just yeah, a little story that's there. Fine. So Jimmy arrives in Kent. Jordy's reunited. He, we look like brothers like yeah. down there, you know. He's covered in fucking tattoos. He dresses like a tramp. We're like, right, we're going out on the piss. First night out on the piss. Two peas in the pod. We're absolutely fucking shit faced, yeah. right? You're kicking all the doors in at this point, right? No, we, no club safe. We were young. We were young at this point, so I don't want to judge us too bad. But I was like, I was young and I was just wild. Like, I was, buck. I was fucking loving life, right? And we're looking at all these southern girls and that, and we're like, yeah, this is fucking going to be great. This Because we can go out more now, because we do seven till seven in the morning, then we're out on the piss, and we're going back to a caravan. I and when the caravans are rocking, don't come and knock in. Not because we're with each other, because we've got girls back. I was going to say, just that, that was going to be my next question. Get that in. So anyway. We're, we just want to say, if the caravan's rocking, don't come knocking, because yeah. Jimmy and I are really good friends. So, yeah. so anyway, we're out on the piss. <sighs> and we end up getting into a bit of bother, didn't we? What kind of bother? He just um, like ran out of money or something? A couple of southern cunts didn't like the cut of our jib. Not this again. Um, Two northern monkeys coming down, basically. having a go. It at- was, big, but he was more pissed than I was. So, like, normally I, I'm pretty chilled out, but he was really pissed. But when you're with your mate, you've kind of, you got to, you just got to look after him no matter yep. what. So if it kicks off, mm. you know, even if it is his fault, I, you know, so anyway, kicked off a bit. Me and him are fucking punching these fucking bouncers. The next thing I know, Bounce. fucking punching uh, these fucking bouncers. But the other bouncers from the other bars had gotten word, so they were coming down as well. I went, yeah, let's fucking go. Yeah, let's are you sure up. you want to say that? Why? Well, because bouncers are bouncers, like bouncers don't like. No, uh, but I mean, bouncers know that if you know it, shit happens. This was fucking nine year ago. Who gives a shit, man? Who gives yeah, a flying yeah, fuck? Yeah, anyway, bouncers in Kent as well. So I mean, yeah, they're not. You're, you're never then. getting in weather spoons again, are you? You still need a good 20 of them. Yeah. So anyway, in all seriousness, it kicked off. That happened. We got the fuck out there. We get back to the caravan, uh, and we actually managed uh, to get a couple of lasses in as well. Oh. What, what do you mean? Stand over there. We just need to beat these two guys up. No, no. Bang, uh, on the bang. way back, Good to go. girls we'd seen earlier that night. Ah, oh, sick. Let's get in the taxi. Oh, in the subway. Nice one. Um, so we, we get them back. Were they nice tag, caravans? Tag teaming. You're kidding me. Oh, it was fucking awesome. Were they nice caravans? The caravans were decent when we first got them. Sure. Uh, they had a bit wear and tear. What what I, I did, bet. I like the decorate. So obviously the lads' mags, 
um, ripped right. out, blue tack everywhere. Brilliant. Your idea of decorating is very different to my. I but thought I did you were putting a data roll rail. I up hoovered. Up. So basically, every night was a case of we order a curry, yeah. we go out on the pace, that sort of thing, and we just rip the fucking place up. It was great. So eligible. I've had a curry tonight. Do you want to come back to mine? It was. Uh, who cared, man? Who cared? They did. It was hilarious because so, the walls were paper thin. So whatever he was doing and whatever I was doing was fucking blatantly obvious In to the me. same caravan? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The walls were fucking paper thin. <laughs> I'll tell you, we could tell exactly what the other one was doing. And then the next day I was like, what the fuck were you doing last night? She sounded like you were fucking killing that. But that is in many ways good because if you're in, it, you know. It was camaraderie in many ways. It mm. was like, it was, it was... Some of the best laughs I've ever fucking had. And it was in, also consensual. In my entire... Well, it was It was definitely consensual. They were fucking loving it. Yeah. They love the Geordies, man, them southern lasses. Yeah. Most people love Geordies. You go to a lot of places and you tend to find that Brian will walk in and go, they love Geordies around here. <laughs> and I'll be like... Really? All right, maybe some, some of them don't. I'm not really painting myself out in the, the best light yet. But it's I? true, or it's not. Oh, or it's um, not if the police yeah. come across. I don't think anyone from the police is going to come around. So uh, you then, what what was the best job you did while you were diving? Like what what was the glamorous job? There wasn't really a glamorous job. Like, yeah, but there must have been a job where you were like fucking. I'm laying the pipe in. Oh yeah, like we had situations. When I say where, laying the pipe, I mean working underwater, laying yeah, all the pipe. Uh, yeah, like there were situations where I felt like. You know, I've got two ships here waiting on me just to finish this one job. And yeah. we've got hundreds of people, two massive ships, and it's all just so I can do this job. They're all up on deck going, yeah. is, is Georgie going to do yeah. it? Yeah, and when you do something great, you do get a bit of a buzz off of it. But yeah. like like I say, that wore off. Do you know what I mean? It just, mm -hmm. it went. It, it, uh, it's not like scoring a goal in the Premier League where you've got like thousands of people chanting your name. If you do something good, you might get a pat on the back when you get out. But really, meant to. the best bit of the job is how mental you can drive the other lads, like in how much you can wind people up. Those were the the like playing cards on on a boat, having a laugh with the lads. Like we had a crew that was Irish, and we got we had like some really good, good laughs. That was the bit I loved about it. You get, but essentially, you get cabin fever, right? Because you are all you're just in a floating cabin. Basically, yeah. We had we had one weird moment where me and Jimmy. We went. We went to um, Nigeria, which wasn't it wasn't pleasant either, to be honest. But like you know, the the money was on the table, and in Nigeria, um, you know, obviously over here, it's very much you treat everyone equally, no mm -hmm. matter what they look like. But in it, when I was on the boats over there, that wasn't the case because me and Jimmy were the odd ones out, if that makes sense. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So people kind of felt that we were taking jobs. Mm -hmm. And that what didn't go down so well. So like that camaraderie that we built up, where we have to look after each other, really come in handy. Really had to. Um, and one day, um, Jimmy got summoned in action again, being a diver medic. Fucking immigrants. Because um, I'm not saying that. Um, no, I mean in Nigeria. How dare you go over there yeah. and take take local jobs? Yeah, fucking their women. No, Nigerial Farage must have been furious. I didn't. Um, it was quite worrying though, because like <laughs> it was quite worrying because. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the problem of immigration I know. in Nigeria. <laughs> I was quite. There's not that. There's not a problem. Uh, there was. How are you fucking though? Like pirates and that around. You know what I mean. And you, you do get a bit. Yeah. Worried um, because I'd been warned by lads who'd been held cap like held hostage before. Like I'd been told by one lad like you know he got stabbed by the pirates and things like that. And, um, they hold on. When to you, you say pirates, let's just these are. These Have you are... ever seen that that film with fucking Tom Hanks where the pirates come aboard? I'm the captain now. Do you know the one I mean? Uh, Those kind pirates of pirates. of the Caribbean. No, man. Any, you know what I fucking mean, you dickhead. Anyway. Hook. So it was a little bit worrying. You're like that, is it? Right. It was a little bit worrying. It was a crocodile with a, with a bomb in I, it. Honestly, if the pirates got a hold of you, you'd be fucking mincemeat. Anyway. Yes. They're pirates. I was pre-warned that there was two kinds of pirates before right. I went out. Gay pirates and straight pirates. I've been told that there's pirates who will hold you hostage and fuck your white arsehole, basically. Yeah. And then there's pirates who will make you smoke a lot of weed and fuck prostitutes. Now, I know which ones I was hoping for <laughs> if it happened to us, and it's not the ones who are going to fuck me up the arse. Don't worry about that. Yes. Because okay, I, I just thought, want to be clear. I thought to myself, well, if it's one of the two, 
It's a fucking no-brainer, isn't Sorry, it? Sorry, what, what are these pirates doing exactly? Well, obviously... Oh, they're... we've caught you. Now we've got this big yeah. pile of weed and a load of whores. Oh, no. Bloody hell. Well, you've come to the right person, because I can help <laughs> you out with both of those. The pirates at the end are throwing you off the boat, going, fucking take him back. Yeah. He's fucked all the prostitutes. Well, as it happened, He's we did crabs. have a bit of an incident where Jimmy got summoned in action. He's dive medic, because we had a lad on deck called Barney. Barney was a local... Um, of course he was, with so, a name like Barney. Started having a fit, foaming at the mouth. Now, um, when I when I walked into the room, because they had him laid out on the room, these guys who weren't medics, needless to say, were yeah. trying to wake him up with salts under the nose and things. Of course they were. Wasn't going to work. Um, Jimmy then realised he was probably going to have to give him... Mouth to mouth. Mouth to mouth. But he was foaming at the mouth at the time. And Jimmy said he didn't look like the cleanest of fellas. Um, but anyway, he's fucking... <laughs> Doing yeah. his best. Yeah. He died, right? This guy died. Of what? He died from whatever was going on. I To this day, I still don't know how he died, but he drifted off, right? He, he went. That's sad. Right? Did you know him or was he? I didn't know him. Okay. I really didn't care at the time. I don't mean to be nasty, but no. obviously I'm like, oh God, someone's died. That's sad. And I feel for his family, but it wasn't cutting me up inside. I don't want to be cold hearted because I had a similar opinion <laughs> last week when we talked about granddad's died. But this is oh, different. Yeah. Like, yeah, I did, yeah. genuinely didn't know this guy. Anyway, yeah. we had no way to keep his body. So what we did... <laughs> Dinner was good that night. Oh. He went into the big giant freezer yeah because we had nowhere else to keep him what else are you gonna do so when you went into the freezer to go and get like a coke oh, or uh, like yeah. to get steaks or whatever out it was barney flavored steak wasn't it oh disgusting <laughs> really oh he was in there like yeah. just frozen yeah he was sitting there of course he was <laughs> well laying there stiff yeah. they say that happens to corpses yeah pretty much somewhat yeah. and frozen ones especially yeah so I don't, did anyone ever get caught by pirates? Uh, well, I, I, I knew um, there's been a few mad situations like where I've heard of that happening. Like um, when I wasn't there, but Jimmy was. He said like we've um, we're, we're getting surrounded here. Like he's so shitting his pants and things. What's the what? Do that? Why do those pirates want you to smoke weed and fuck prostitutes? I've do got they- no idea. But I'm I and I just say if they are listening, yeah, just treat more people that way. Look after them. I'm guessing the prostitutes aren't the. Um, I mean, prostitutes. I mean, it's they're one not going to be the cleanest of prostitutes. Probably not, mate. No. But at the end of the day, if it's a choice between me getting a dick up me or so fucking a prostitute, <laughs> I know which one I'm I'm pulling for. We know that's going in the trailer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck me, you think so quick sometimes. Yeah. All right, he has a story. I'll tell you. Mm-hmm. Um, Is there any fucking in the arse in it? No. Well, Shame. actually, there might be. Um, I don't. I wasn't there, but there was. There's a, basically when you go down deeper. Mm-hmm. It's so easy to turn all of this into innuendos. When you go down deeper, you are in a chamber, mm-hmm. pressurized at the depth. So you can go on your laptop, you can get food, at, but your body thinks it's 200 meters deep. Then what you do is you go through into a bell and then they lower you down to 200 meters and Got then you. you get out and work yeah, at that. Yeah. But your body is tricked almost. Very into clever. It's at that depth the whole Who time. Who the fuck makes this stuff? Well, obviously oil companies Very clever. fucking have a lot of money, don't they? Yeah. Anyway, maybe... We can't even get a fucking sponsor. Sponsor Jesus. the fucking podcast, you useless cunts. Shell, are you listening? Eh? Fucking hell. Anyway. Where, where's Gazprom when you need him? Mm. Anyway. What happened was, in, a lot of the time is in the bell, you have one lad who's in the bell and he is sort of your um, guy who looks after you and you go out on the seabed, you know, you're doing what you're being told to do and then you come back and you tend for him. Your life's in his hands. Exactly. Yeah. And that is a really bad man to decide to fuck his wife. What? And one man decided that he couldn't resist that. Right, are you speaking the third person now, or is this... This never happened to me. Right. I was not involved in this in any way, but I'm aware that there was a guy who was fucking his mate's wife. They'd been friends, family's friends, for years and years and years. He goes down. Little does he know that the other lad has oh, very no. recently found out. found out about it and said, fuck all. Keep play- All right, mate, yeah, looking forward to the next job. Looking forward to it, mate. Yeah, 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 no problem. He knows fine well you've been dicking his wife for fucking 10 fucking years or whatever it was, right? 10 years? Five years or something. It was a long time. It'd been he take go- the wife down as well? It'd been going on for a long time. He waits until the guy goes out from the bell. He's tending them out. Yeah, go on, mate. 
we've all got knives on with uh, divers. Divers have big, big diving knives. It's sort of part of the thing. That's Rolexes and knives. Is that a thing? Yeah. Cuts the umbilical cord. What? Shuts the door. He's dead. See He's you gone. Later, mate. Killed him. Gone. Good night. And divers. Guy- there's some divers are not to be fucked with. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, well, I mean, you know, you Just don't fuck in, with anyone when you're cheating on them. But in general, they, some of them are wild cons. Like, there's some divers who are just like... <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. Like, there's a, there's a like when you go out with divers, it's yeah. a night out. Yeah. Like going out with cricketers. <laughs> no, no. Like... I mean, if you've been out with Darren Groff. If you, go out with, if you go out on a night out with divers, like, expect to be propositioned with... Um, with what? What? Anything you want, really? <sighs> People know what I'm alluding to, like shit that might not be strictly street legal. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's it's going to be a night to remember. You know, laughing gas, things like that. Maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. more. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, it's it. Divers, it's fun, they're, it? they're extremists by nature. Do you know what I mean? They are extreme personality yeah. types. They're the ISIS of the sea. Yeah. Not all of say. them. There's some very chilled out lads and some nice lads and some canny lads who you could take home to meet your mother. But some of them are fucking crazy. Yeah. Do you think it's crazy that he cut his um, umbilical cord? I kind of feel it's fair play. An eye for an if eye. If someone man. fucks your wife and has been doing it for that long and is supposed to be your best mate. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Fair enough. So at what point did you get sick of diving and think, fuck this? Um, I think not long after that job. Well, actually, what, what kind of happened was there was a death in the family. Another okay. one. You know what I mean? Um, there was a death in the family, but it was like a really, really bad death. And I was just like, oh, fuck me. I, the motivation for yeah. life and to get up and do a job that my heart wasn't in anyway. And I knew it wasn't really for me anyway. Um, I'd gotten better at diving by this point and I was, I was really comfortable and confident in the water. And a lot of that was thanks to Jimmy because he taught us a lot. Um, nice. but I just, after this happened, I went off the deep end, like, I started fucking not caring about myself. I stopped going to the gym. I stopped giving a shit. I was like just getting drunk every fucking day, to be quite honest with you. Like I wasn't an alcoholic because I could have stopped drinking whenever I wanted, but I just wanted, I just enjoyed being pissed. Right. That does sound like you're an alcoholic. Yeah. Okay. Basically one day I decided to not do that anymore. And it it wasn't a problem. It was just something I did recreationally. Just, I was in a path of self-destruction and a lot of people have this when someone dies, they just stop caring about themselves. What's the point anymore? My life basically, because I had a bit of money saved up from that good job I was on was I get up in the morning um, I probably get a bacon sandwich, something like that, because I still ate. Big I, spender. I mean, I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't that far gone. I wouldn't eat anymore. I've always eaten. Um, and oh God. I would just play on like Grand Theft Auto. You were, you were off the rails for about was it Grand Theft Auto Five? It might be um, San Andreas. Was it for about a good four, three, f- four, five? Anyway, for a good like. Eight hours, and I just sit there all day, just playing on Grand Theft Auto, just living on shit. And I just, I barely even went out the house at some point. I was just like, I was in a really bad place, and I was just like, this is fuck. This. Is. I went, I went back. I did go back after that. I got me out together a bit. I started going back to the gym, and I went back on a job. But the next job I went on, I knew my heart isn't in this anymore, and I'm coming to the end. And around that time was when I did the Nile Ranger rant. And that was when I started thinking, maybe there's something to this YouTube shit. Like, maybe I can, um, you know, give this a go. You really were off your head, weren't you? I really was. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that part of part of that Nile Ranger rant was just because I was pissed off about life as well, as well as... A bit like Nile. You know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you related. So yeah, I was, I was just fed up and I was like... I need to do something else. I, this, is, As much as I thought I'd go back to it for the money, I knew that I wasn't going to be... Don't get us wrong, there are some divers out there, and like, this is a disclaimer, who are well-educated, smart, sharp blokes who are going play. I know one lad um, who's a good friend of mine, um, Dave. Call Jimmy. Oh, right. I'll call him Dave. Um, he's got his shit together and he's going places. And, and, and Jimmy's going places as well. They, they, but, you know, there's just... It wasn't for me. The yeah. long term wasn't for me. Can you... What's the top you can do in the diving game? You can become like a supervisor of um, sat diving and, uh, you know, basically you're just like working with Shell in close proximity and you're making over a thousand pound a day and, yeah. you know, they're making a lot of money, some of the lads I know. 
Um, and they deserve it. I'm happy for them. We're working class lads from proper working class backgrounds don't get that opportunity. So, wh- so I'm, I'm fucking happy for them. But it's the the diving schools make it out like it's it's a get rich quick scheme and it's not. It's hard fucking work and it's a long road and sometimes families suffer because lads are no and like any, any offshore lad. They're away from their families for fucking months on end. They're sending money back, though. Yeah, they're sending money back, but some of them are living miserable lives for the sake of their family. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, they're real. Like, I know one bloke, I went, when was the last time you seen your daughter? He was like, six months ago. I was like, what are you fucking, what, yeah. what for? He was like, yeah. I'm paying her through university. Yeah. And he didn't want to have any debt or anything in case anything happened to him. So he's like, just working like a fucking prisoner of fucking war and just giving it everything. Um, so a lot of them just sacrifice for their family's happiness and that's where my respect comes from, the lads. But at the same time, some of them are there and they don't have any families. They're like, they're essentially like, they're like you. They have, they don't have very many responsibilities. So when they get back to fucking Newcastle or wherever they are, they are balling. Like you say, they got a, they got a knife yeah, I had and a that moment. I had that moment where I come home at one point and I was like, I knew I was making good money and I knew just in general... I went out and had some good fucking nights out. Like I'm not gonna lie. You you knew they and they see the Rolex and they see your I don't set. Have, of, oh, yeah. They see your set of knives. Yeah. You're there in the corner of the club. Now that's not a that's not all. This also cuts through butter no, like it a wasn't, hot knife. It wasn't a butter. status symbol by any means because it was like most girls when they say what do you do and you go deep sea diving they go what do you die for and I just go gold. Brilliant. It's an easier answer. Yeah, yeah. And it's a shot. It's nightclub, isn't it? Yeah, the yeah. music's going. Yeah, it's just than gold. Going. Gold. It's, it's for the uh, hegemony of the government in Saudi Arabia so they can keep the oil going so that ultimately <laughs> we can sustain the system which keeps you oppressed. <laughs> what? Gold. Basically, it's one of them, isn't it? So, yeah. Um, but yeah. Did you ever feel bad? About what? Diving for oil people. You know, that, that black money. I don't. Un- unless I'm hurting someone physically myself which you are inadvertently maybe yeah. as I was I don't know but I'm, as long as I'm not hurting someone in myself like I've been criticised past by making fucking me money but ill gotten gains mm-hmm. some would say yeah. um, sexism I'm putting fucking money on the table like I'm putting food on the table um, and that's what every man's got to do at the end of the day so fucking people can't criticise me as far as I'm concerned just checking that's my philosophy. And so, uh, obviously, also, though, that leads down the route of when people have, some people have a lot of money, they misspend it. Like, you spent yours on drink. A lot of booze and a lot of shit. And I, I wasted a hell of a lot of money, like, were, when I was younger. A lot of people on drugs on, in that industry. And that, surely that can't be healthy. Like, if you've, if you've been popping <laughs> ecstasy the night before, you're about to go down to, you know, 200 metres or whatever. Some lads, I don't know how they're fucking still alive. I really don't. Like, some of the fucking shit I've seen, I don't know how they're fucking alive. Like, with their people... Like, I've seen, like- I've seen, like, people die in their early 20s, like... Um, Kurt Cobain. Like, I, I, I know people who've died from drug overdoses in their early 20s, and mm. I, I know lads who are fucking a lot older than that in the diving game who are really fucking enjoying life, like, and I... I just I don't know how would how would how would they manage it. Maybe they're just used to those extremes. Like, I think uh, hardened like Ozzy Osbourne's still gone, so out's possible. Yeah, Gaza's hardened. still alive. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's also just though you know if you like you say if they're a bit crazy, it probably helps their approach. You know that if you're just crazy and you don't realise sometimes people on drugs like they so, they get so serious that that kills them. Do you know what I mean? They basically they get depressed. Whereas diving people are sort of like I'm earning money. Well, I've got a lot. You well, know, yeah, it, it, it's a little bit more like. Um, uh, not quite Scarface, but it's that extremist yeah. of success. Like they, they work hard, play hard. Yeah. And that is, it's one of those situations. Play hard. Interesting. So if you wanted now, could you just get back in the game? I reckon I've got some friends who'd fucking look after us if uh, could you YouTube get, went tits up. Could you get back in the game? Could you dive in this shape? In the shape I am, no, I'd probably lose weight pretty quickly as soon as I started diving. Like, it's all, I it's put all a picture physical. of me on Instagram the other day. And people are like, is that even you? Because obviously I don't have a beard and I'm a bit lighter. Yeah. In that photograph, I was 20 fucking stone. By most people's standards, that is still like a really big That's bloke. clinically obese. Right, okay. It is. Fair play. Yeah. Um, but the people are like, yeah, so you look dead skinny. I'm like, I was fucking 20 fucking stone, mate. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's like massive. Are you in, and you, were you a diver at that point? You were in the boat, weren't you? Like, yeah, I was, yeah, I was fucking diving that day. On that photo, that very day. So obviously, like you say, you had that Nar Ranger moment when that video sort of caught fire. Mm. It got, you know, you were northeast viral. As for, we've said. For a little while. And then um, uh, after that, you, 
I, I guess what I, I struggle with is people. I, it does sound like such a shift in what you wanted to do. Do you know what I mean? Like you went from a really extreme job to basically an industry with a bunch of, excuse my language, fucking pussies. So, yeah. No, I think the thing is about me and the thing that the constant that we're seeing across this is you've got someone mm. who has no business doing either of these jobs. When I, all right, I was a northern, like maybe I had a bit of business being a dive. I was a northern lad, strong-willed mechanical engineer and background. Mm. So in one sense, I was pretty, but I'd never fucking done any diving at all. And I sat there and looked at a YouTube video and said, with full confidence in myself, I never fucking doubted myself for one second. Now I look back on that as an older lad and I think to myself, what the fuck was I thinking? Can we post that video in the description? Just Yeah, I, I'll try and find it. I'll try and do that. And I look at this video and I say, I can do that. If anyone can do that, then I can do that as well. Mm -hmm. That's not a logical thing. To, but I've got like a very good self-belief, yeah. but sometimes that self-belief is like, it's wrong. You know what I mean? Like I'm very decisive. I've been raised to be quite a decisive bloke. I was the man of the house at a young age. So I've always been very like, this is what I'm going to fucking do. And I'm going to fucking put a hundred million percent into it. That will serve you. And I did, and it's a good thing, but it can be a weakness at times because sometimes that decision that I've made can be wrong. Now, luckily in both cases, it was right. Yeah. But well, you, know, you it, it is always good. Um, yeah. I suppose the point is you'd never, Something terrible would have had to happen for, for you to not think you were right. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for the, the, the science to say I'm wrong. But in my head, I had such self-belief, like, I can be a deep sea diver. I can be a fucking YouTuber. But the time I said both of these things, at the time I said both of these things, I really had no... And I look back at it, like, what the fuck were you thinking, mate? You have no right to even come out with that sentence. What makes you think you can do that? You've had one video. All right, you got a few views on it. But that... We've seen many viral videos come and fucking go, oh, and, yeah. and you have that one moment. Jack Ludwig. Oh yeah, or you have that that guy who's even football rants. We've seen millions of football rants where the guy gets hundred plus thousand views, and they're gone. And the, you know they have a few uh, fan channel videos, but yep. then they just calm right down. So uh, I have no, I had no right in saying that. But well, you either capitalize on it. And or you don't, and you, mm. so it either goes, you know, because some people don't know how to capitalize on your opportunities. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, there are a few people out there. They've had those rants, and they've sort of become famous. Or, or that their fifteen minutes. There's a difference between that fifteen minutes and that. So there's the sort of famous, and then there's infamous, and those sort of. So you, you can go down a number of different routes. Right. How the I still don't get quite how you got to the point where you can earn money from your YouTube channel or even make a living just doing YouTube. I had to reverse engineer, like, in my head, like, YouTube. So, like, I'm the type of person who, some like, I don't know how other people think. All I know is how Clearly. I think. But I guess some people might sit there and think, oh, I've got this many views, I've got this many likes. Great. But I don't, I never thought that. I just thought, why has this happened? And I kept thinking, why, why, why? And that's why? the way I thought about the channel, yeah. the way I thought about how how YouTube works as a system. I'm sure there's a number of people who sit out there going, why did this Why happen? did this work? Why, why is Geordie getting views? Why? I know for a fact that there's big companies out there who often look at YouTubers and scratch their heads and go, why, why? is he getting views? There's, there's a PowerPoint presentation out there which literally goes, monetizing YouTube. Your face and then just the word in block capitals. Why? Why? I'm, so basically, I question. I'm a questioner of everything. Like I'm one of those dickheads who, you know, I guess I lay awake at night. I used to, but like thinking about subjects and all subjects, right? Like I'm interested. I do like to learn. I just have to be interested. But when I'm interested in something, I'm the type of person who knows. I'll, I'll learn a lot about that subject. But you're quite a hardened person. Yeah. Like so. I, but I also find you're quite a hardened person. So you're sort of not. This could sound a little bit wanky at this point, but sort of, you know, you are not, you you didn't just gr grow up in someone's house and then go, I'm going to make a video in my bedroom and sort of get into it in that way. You you almost fell into it. Do you know what I mean? A million percent. I fell into it, yeah. But So at what point did you consciously think, right, I'm going to start making videos now and try and make it into my job? Yeah. Well, I remember when the, 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 the Nile Ranger one came out, I deleted that at first because I didn't want any attention. And I had like 10,000 views for like within an hour and I deleted it because I thought, fuck me, everyone's going to see is that mm. like a fucking lunatic. Yeah. And I got convinced to put that back on. But once it- By who? By a diver. By one of the divers. Not Jimmy, it was Dave, right? Um, Shout out to why? Dave. Appreciate it, mate. Because he just said, that is really good. That's really good. And 
He's been very supportive of the, the whole time anyway. He's a big Newcastle fan as well. Anyway, um, so as it happened, I just, I had a feeling, even before I did diving, I always really, I, I found diving through YouTube. I was a big fan of YouTube. And I watched a couple of YouTubers in particular who sort of inspired us. Mm -hmm. One of them was a, a guy called Buggy2988. Now, I've mentioned him before on the channel. Yeah. He's a really big guy. He's an overweight. With all due respect, he knows he's fucking overweight. He's an obese YouTuber. Oh, Buggy. And he does bug, Buggy. And he does, he like does character. a Francis character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's good. So around the time where I was starting to get into the idea of making YouTube videos, he did a deal with PlayStation where they gave him a PlayStation early yeah, yeah. and he did an unboxing. And he was like, it, yeah. Yeah, and he's yeah. very excited. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my fucking God. Like, he, yeah. he sounds like Oh, Cartman. my fucking God, He yeah. sounds like Cart Eric Cartman a little bit, come to life. And I was just like, he's got a fucking PlayStation early through his channel. Uh, and like... I was like, all right, he's obviously Finally, doing... Finally, the big bucks. Uh, he's obviously doing really well out of it. And I, what I liked about him is the way he connected with his audience. Yeah. Because when he talks to you on a video, you feel like he's really talking to you. Oh, yeah. And I always wanted to be that kind of YouTuber. I don't want to be a YouTuber, with all due respect to the YouTubers out there, who relies on oh, other people. Yeah, yeah. I want to be able to look right in the camera and I'm talking to you at home like I'm your mate. And I want them to have that... That's why when people come up to me, you've you've been there. People on, even though I'm a big bloke, people when they know us, they're pretty. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're lovely. They feel like they know us a little bit, and I like that. And I thought, I right, if, and another YouTuber who does the same thing, or two YouTubers, are the Hodge twins, who are don't watch them so much. Uh, you know who they are. Yeah, right? yeah, they've got a similar thing going on, and they're fucking funny. They're really funny. So, I was really inspired by those two, and I just thought January 2014 all right, I don't know if you can really make money out of this or anything is even possible, but I've just got a feeling yeah. that this is what I should be fucking doing. Like, I guess in, in your life and everyone who ends up doing anything that they really want to be in, I guess some there's a fucking voice there that tells you Keep doing this it. is the fucking yeah. thing that you should be doing. So now you're in it, what's your opinion on it? Because you're in the middle of the bubble now. Mm. You're one of the, you know, you're one of the physically big ones and one of the subscriber-wise. Right, yeah. Enough people subscribe that it's sort of like, hey, we should get this guy on. When you look at where YouTubers have come from and where they're now going, yep. it's it's changing a fuck ton. It, and that's what I mean by the music industry. Like, when you look at, like, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of rap music. So when you look at the old rap music when NWA first came out mm -hmm. and then even the early days of... Jay-Z and, and, and people like Nas and people like that and then look at where rap music is today. Mm -hmm. It feels like YouTube is going through that at light speed. So it's go it's coming to the same point, just only quicker. We're, we're selling out so much faster and it, it, it's watering down so much quicker and it's now just all about views. You know, everyone's doing the same thing that the next person... That's the problem with, like, I find with rap music. Like, you look at the old rap music, it's originality, it's creativity. People are rapping about different subjects. You've got Nas, who's doing knowledge topics and things like that, and Jay-Z, who's telling a story. Or and, and now it's all about just, I'm having a fucking party and getting pissed with me mates. Like, the subject matter's changed. I mean, it's, all about, it's all about a catchy chorus that's going to get the spins going. That is what YouTube is doing right now, this second. We've gone from... And I'm not saying that it was great because obviously when YouTube started, it was all watching your pet do a fucking trick for Christ's sake. But we had a happy medium between, all right, brands are getting involved, but we're also making good content. And now I just feel like we're, we're it's just selling out so quickly. And so I don't ever want people to look at my channel and say, I mean, you're always going to be people, have people who preferred the way it was, but I, I feel like there's a happy medium where I can still, you know, make an income off of my channel, but I also want to stay true to who I am be the real person, be the person they know, and not. I don't ever want to change. I want to stay the same person. I, all right, I want the content to grow and be better, but I don't want to fucking lose who I am because a fucking brand's telling us, Jody, we don't want you to swear anymore. The day I stop swearing permanently on this channel, and I'm not saying I wouldn't do it for the odd video, because I fucking would, for the right price and things also, like that. Also, if you want to get your message across to a certain yeah, audience. And, and sometimes yeah, yeah. you want to make a video for the kids and things like that. and it's a, No, it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Like Spencer does it a lot, and I respect people who do do that. Yeah, but Spencer's but taken that a different. You've taken this is who I am. Yeah. I fucking swear and all that shit, right? So I'm not going to fucking stop doing that. Let's just that, say this now. I'll be losing who I am. But that's not taking a shot at Spencer not swearing. No, it, he's and, one of my best just mates. Very clear. Mate. Yeah, exactly. He's one of my best fucking pals. He, he'll he'll know if he watches this. That's not what I'm saying. So what? I don't. I know. I know how to reply to that. Just simplify for me, because you get a bit. <laughs> bit artsy, fartsy. You do it. 
you get a bit museum-y. You're not with a girl. This isn't the museum. We're not talking Egypt. It's so funny you say that. Um, all right. YouTube's always been moving in a certain direction. The direction of rich, old, white men in suits controlling what goes on to the fucking YouTube channel. Yeah, but channel. now you're starting to sound like you're beginning to happened. put your tin hat on. That, that's but that's what the problem. That's what's happening, though. Is okay. that what's happening? To some extent. To some extent. That's Not at all. I'm just saying that's what's happening. Yeah. So what I'm saying about that is w w a lot of people have realised that and it's they know the direction it's moving in. They've hopped on because they realise it's moving in that direction and it, ultimately that's going to have an end anyway because every, every venture has an end. They just want to make the most money out of it in that time. Are you ready for some emails? Shoot. The first one's entitled Wanking. <sighs> Great subject. Hi, boys. Hello. Yeah, I have a problem. I've been my girlfriend for nearly five years now and is a big yet unusual situation. Touch Johnny's arm. We live apart at the minute and when it comes to pleasuring oneself, I sway away from her and porn and instead tend to masturbate over her friend's pictures. <laughs> I didn't expect I that. I knew you'd like this. I, I, really knew, I knew you'd like this one. <laughs> what a dirty fucking... When I do that. opt for porn, I look... For videos with women who look like similar her girlfriends, to the yeah, my girlfriend's oh, friends. Christ Almighty! Is this weird? Fuck yes. Um, while in the mood, I get strong urge of wanting to fuck her mate. Yet, when not aroused, I don't find her attractive. What's going on? P.S. Have you ever found yourself in a similar situation? Help me. I've done the whole find a porn star that looks similar to someone you know before. I've definitely, honestly, How done that. How have you that. done that? Well, what happens is when you when you split up with a girl, mm -hmm. sometimes you've had like a really good fuck off them and that, and you you sort of you're not quite done with them yet, but you know that you need to let them go because it's what's for the best. Sure. So a happy medium, just so you get that out of your system, <coughs> is to find a porn star that looks a lot like them and just imagine that that is them, and it just helps grind it out. That's not the same as wanking over your girlfriend's friends, though, is it? No, that was no. that was I was a single lad when I did that, and that was. I wasn't intruding on any. I mean, you can wank over whoever you want. That's the beauty of wanking. Can you? That's the that's the art form that's of like, wanking. For me, that the true artistic sense of wanking is yes. when you can really picture something in your head mm -hmm. and visualize it yes. and, and 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 crack one out. Right, but if it's over your girlfriend's friends, that's not great, is it? Whatever takes it, or what, as long no. as she doesn't find out, it doesn't matter. What do you mean? Fine. Well, she's never going to find out unless she listens to the podcast and d puts two That's and two the thing. together. That's the thing. And I've got a bit of a news flash for some of the women out there. Just because he come when he was with you doesn't mean you made him come. I think we all know many men out there have fucked women and many, thought of something many, else. Many, and I'm sure many. that women probably do the same thing. Sometimes women are probably not even thinking about sex, probably thinking about doing the washing, something like that, if it's not that good. Um, but I've thought about other women before while I've been inside a woman. That's a confession I've. Really? Got. So yeah, it's, yeah, I have. Sometimes you've got to, otherwise it's never going to come, and you're just solemnly fucking going down with your ship, aren't you? But Bloody going down hell. your ship, surely you. I'm like should... the fucking guy on the Titanic, just sitting there like, no, nah, just keep playing the violins. I'll be alright. Playing the cello. Surely then you just say this isn't working. Let's just. Well, yeah, I've, I've, that's obviously why you know it didn't work out. Sorry. So your advice, to this guy is this is fine. It's probably not the right thing for him to be. Uh, the thing is, you can't be in a relationship five years deep and expect it to be the same way it was at the start. Yeah, but you shouldn't be thinking about our fucking friends, But mate. I don't think you should be thinking about it. He's got a point, Lawrence. He has got a point. So Wait, who? Him? Yeah, you've got a point. Yeah. So, solution? Um, Stop. St try. I mean, if you have to wank, if you have well, to... obviously he's got to wank, mate. If you have to... no. Because, well, yeah. But if you have to, or you feel like you have to, Try and train your brain to want something else. So find something completely the opposite. Something else. Do you know what I mean? Anything else. Just anything. Bestiality. No. Just <laughs> find something else that's not illegal and will allow you to... Like what, though? You've got to give them a solution. Find someone who looks the opposite of her friends on the pornography, like, so if, if that's if she's, what you're looking at. If her friend is, for example... I don't know. We've all been here. Uh, do you know what I mean? We've all been, we've all been here trying maybe to find it, something else to wank over. Yeah, just, you know? I don't know. Go to like Asian or something. Just go out left field. Just go different. Yeah, Asian. I don't mean like that. I mean, kind of mean like that. But Asian. like train your brain to like something else. Or even better, train your brain to 
try and make yourself a bit more productive. Maybe, you know, go make a cup of tea the next time you have a wank, you know? Yeah, I definitely had a period of my life where I was wanking way too much. Like, when I look back on it, I just think just nothing, like was, get, nothing was getting done. Yeah. Not, uh, nothing was getting done. Except your cock. Like, I think it was when I first started YouTube, really. I mean, it's like... Did you, would you make a little video and then knock one out, one out make, make a, a video, video, crack one out? Is sometimes, it, you, sometimes you combine the two. It's, it's when you have to be creative as well, it's no good trying to be creative on a full sack. You've really got to expel sure. that. Um, I think that's going to be what your autobiography is called, isn't it? No good trying to be creative on a full sack. <laughs> the true Geordie story. Ah, it's always good to have a woman around. Um, or so a hand. I really Just try something different. I agree with that. Good, good answer, Lawrence. Try something else. Next email. <sighs> this one's a, a, a different one. It's called bullying. Now, after my bullying story last week, we've had a lot of people who have written in or said, hey, I've been bullied in a oh, similar God, way. Oh, God, that means I'm going to have to go out in every cunt's fucking school to chin these bullies, doesn't it? Or you go around and you go, you'd give those inspirational speeches. Don't hit each other. Yeah. Don't hurt each other. You are all the mouse in the cream. You can all jump out. You know, that's you. <laughs> Um, d- uh, my name is Rrr, and I love the podcast, but I've been having some problems with bullying from mm. friends, in inverted commas, at school recently, and I need your opinions. Mm. Um, it all started when I told my friends that my dad lost his leg in a car accident, and then they all made jokes about him a whole school year, which I thought was harsh, but I could deal with it. <laughs> This kid's got resilience. Recently, however, when I got a girlfriend, they started making fun of me for that too and really started... Make it fun of them for having a girlfriend. Taking the jokes too far. My girlfriend's second name rhymes with pear. Whoa. Um, so they've been making stupid, unfunny jokes about that. Yeah, crazy fruit jokes. But they've also been calling uh, her a slag. I like how it goes for the pear thing first. So... Oh, leave me alone about the pear thing or leave me with the slag stuff that's yeah. been going on. Uh, mate, just, you know, man the fuck up, mate. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, but what about the girl? I feel a bit sorry for the girl. They've been doing it on her oh. Facebook. Well, that these days, like, kids are a bit fucking cruel, aren't they? They always have been. And with uh, online, it can just be even crueler because then there's no backlash, is there? Yeah. My philosophy was always the same thing with bullies, but the, the problem is that I never really suffered the way other kids were because I was so big. But I think con- confronting the biggest of the lot of them is usually the best way to go about things. My advice, yeah, completely agree with that. Find a big tree. <laughs> Fuck get sake. them as close to it as possible. <laughs> and, and a spine will be snapped. And then go, I think I think there's a there's a box of gold at the top. Just rock the tree <laughs> and let's see if it falls down. 20 but, minutes later, bang, Just co- Just confront the biggest, meanest, horriblest cunt of the lot of them and just say, yeah, you have to fucking score. And, and you know what it is? You, you, might, you might not fare too well, but people will respect you more if you fucking stand up to them and they'll eventually calm down and back off. It might hurt in the first place, though. Well, yeah, but the thing is, being a victim is not... Don't, I don't. I don't think anyone should just go the life being the victim. Like it's, it's, a good it's, point. it's not a good look, mate. It, it's a good I'd point. far rather just grab the bull by the horns and get fucking gored once than fucking live a life of misery for fucking to the rest of the fucking school year. Just you know, if you've got if you've got the bottle, try and take the fucking situation in hand. This one's called dickhead. All right, mate. Calm down. Hey guys, big fan here from the states. Peace out. Hey, America. Yeah. Uh, My name is whatever the fuck you guys call me, uh, Travis. I'm 22 years old and I'm in... Travis is a great American name, isn't it? And I'm in a year-long relationship with my girlfriend. Is that him? Imagine if he's at six months now and he goes, we're in a year-long relationship. And she goes, what? It's like, yep. Yep. Um, I love her and I'm happy with her and things are going great, but she lives about an hour away and graduated school in the spring. I think that means like university sort of thing. But yeah. yeah. So I see her around once a week if I'm lucky because of school and work. So sometimes we might not fuck for a month. Jesus Christ, son. Fuck me. Because of it, I do see, uh, see here we... Blue balls. It, it could, because of that, when he does see her, when they go out and eat or something, they might not have the time to have sex. Oh, no. Now, my instant advice would be, if you don't have the time to have sex, or you're not making the time don't to Don't fucking sex, eat then. Yeah, but maybe she doesn't. Mm. And maybe she doesn't, you know, maybe mm. your appetite is not matched. You know what I mean? Th- this thing goes on. It says, and I don't mention it because the one time I did, she yelled at me saying, all I want to do is get my dick wet and shit. 
All he, all he wants to do is get his dick wet. He's getting it once shit. a month, pet. Once a month. Mate, I'm, I'm going to make a judgment right now. now. I'm making a judgment call. I don't even need to hear another word. Wait. Lawrence, don't speak yeah, but in the words said- of Gwen Stefani. Yeah. All right? I don't think it was Gwen Stefani. Get rid of her. Good. If she's not looking after you sexually, fuck her off. Either fuck me or fuck you. That's what I would say to her. Right. Either fuck me yeah. or fuck you. What does that mean? That means fuck you, you're gone. Right. Because I'm getting fucked by someone. A and woman, it's not going to be you. If a woman doesn't want to fuck a man, a man, what's the point anymore? What's the fucking point, man? What are we even doing here? Go to museums and fuck stuff. Fuck off. Yeah. You're taking her out. You're taking her out for meals, mate. She's not giving you anything. That's outrageous. Stop wasting your fucking time. You can't, you don't just take a girl out just to fuck him. No, but she's but getting he something. Is, what's yeah. he getting? What's, what's, fucking. Yeah, he's having dinner with her. He's having some chicken. All right, mate. He's gagging for it. Yeah, but she might be If as you're well. in a relationship and you're desperate for sex, something is wrong. Something is very wrong. Yeah. No, and now I... Either agree. fuck me or fuck you. Hashtag fuck you. End of. I disagree. I think the best way to go here is to say to her, look, I don't think I'm getting the amount of sex in the relationship that I need. Do you feel the same? Because she might go, fucking yeah, I've been waiting for you to make I've a move. I've never ever been in a relationship where I've been refused sex. Ever in my life. Fantastic. Great for you. Sometimes this guy's fucked. That might be out of fear. Do you know what I mean? But it's never been refused. Right. All right? Okay. That was a joke. Because a joke. Of... Good. Right. And I'm glad we're making jokes now about that sort that of thing. Jokes. Good. Yeah. That right. Was... Belittling those sort of people's uh, um, situation is no, good. In all seriousness, though. It's all right, Donald. It's all seriousness. I haven't. I wouldn't want to be with someone who uses sex as a tool. Oh, you only want to get your dick back. He's had it once in a month. Yeah, but... You know, I mean, she might feel used if he's... Maybe, used? Maybe he bought he's taken it, her out. Maybe he bought it up wrong. Maybe he sort of went, oh, we don't have any sex. Maybe if he just went to her and said, look... He's a pussy. This guy, I can tell by the way he's wrote the fucking email. No offence, mate. I'm sorry. But you're a pussy. You, you're bringing it up to her. Oh, please. No, if you haven't had sex in a month, I'd be... Stop texting her. Just say, yeah, you're not making any effort with me. Fuck off. Just get rid of her. Gone. It's a waste of fucking time, that one. Get the feeling that one, press your buttons. I hate women who do that shit to Take men. That up. Feel bad for them. Really? All the men out there getting held out, held out on um, uh, my sympathies. Don't right. put up with it. Don't tolerate it. How could someone hold out on sex? The sex is all there is in life. And our lads who haven't been fucked. Like, and our lads, me mate, who've had, who've had shagged, being shagged about, what, once in fucking 12 months. I don't know how they fucking do it. Yeah. Fuck that. Fucking, you're right, yeah. No way. Women are useless. No, I'm just saying, if your needs aren't being met, what are you in a relationship for? You need to look at men and women, both of their needs need to be met. But if that's not happening, then neither you should be together. Go on. Those women should go and find some dickless cunt and be with them. Dickless. Dickless cunt, I said. Dickless for chickless. Yeah. He basically went on in this email before you interrupted me and said he was thinking about cheating on her. Don't cheat. Get rid. Yeah. Get rid now. If you're thinking about cheating, As soon don't. as you've heard this, text that instantly. Don't ring her up. She's not worth that. She's worth a call. She's not worth a call. You've been together She's not a worth year. a call. She won't even give him a hand job. Text her. Didn't say that. And say, sorry, this isn't working. Goodbye. This was a year-long relationship. Alfida's aim. And if she, she's got a problem with it, just play her this fucking clip. Yeah, you're right. That'll definitely help soften the blow. Yeah, she needs to hear it from me, really. Yeah, you see it's this big fat Englishman? Yeah, he seems to think that you're it's, not giving me what I want. It's better to hear it from me, in all seriousness, because this okay. is how brutal she needs to hear it, because um, women like that piss me off. Then I have an idea, right? It, it, after Right, we both get 10 seconds to deliver a message to the girl mm. that we think he should deliver. So you're just going to look straight down the lens of your camera, you're just, your camera, right. and you're just going to deliver the message that you think, so that then when he... So he can then take those words, he can deliver them in there a few times, and then he can go to and he can go, yeah, this is... To, I'll, I'll let you go first. Okay. All right, <clears> calm <throat> down, you just fucking... Sorry, yeah, I'm just trying to just get in there. Yeah. Um, uh, ready? Okay. Right, right. And you're going to talk to her. She's looking at you right now. Is it Travis's girlfriend? Yes, Travis's girlfriend. Travis's girlfriend's looking I'm at Travi- you right now. I'm Travis, and yeah. You have to channel Travis and say ready? exactly what you're going to say to her. And we're in the scene. I miss you a lot when you're not around and I am a very sexual being. What I want, I'm just wondering, are we having enough sex for you? Like, could we have a bit more sex? Is that that ragu good? Could we have a little more sex? Because I feel like we're not having enough sex and I find you really attractive. Maybe we could have more sex. 
All right. That's a really, I think like that went well. Can I, uh, my turn. Cut. My turn. Cut. Um, so now I'm talking to her. You're Travis. She's sitting opposite you. You're at dinner. You're in a lovely restaurant. Right. You Are you Travis now or are you you? I'm Travis. Right, you're Travis. Travis. Okay, right, I'm Travis. Travis. Okay. And okay. <sighs> compose yourself. Right. Whenever you want. <laughs> Don't. Just let us. Right. Okay. Just compose yourself. <sighs> the last time I brought this up with you, you said all I wanted was my dick wet. Unfortunately, I've had enough. Yeah. I'm not prepared to go on with this any longer. Oh, You're starving us while I'm feeding you. How is that ragu? You enjoying it? Eh? You enjoying that ragu? Is that, you filling your little face? Are you enjoying that? Enjoy it. Well, it's the last one you'll ever have with me, pet. Eh? It's over. I'm done. I've had enough of your shit. I'm off to get a woman who actually appreciates us and will fuck us. So fuck you. Fuck me. Fuck you. And scene. So now he can just basically clip those up. He just puts the mobile phone or maybe he gets an iPad, does the zoom and then just puts that in front of mm. his face. Mm. And she's going, Travis, what are you doing? He's just like, just listen to the video mm. and then just presses play and then delivers the message out of the iPad. Do that. I'm happy for that. Brilliant. Um, whichever one he chooses, mm -hmm. both good. Um, in a way. Just, I mean, I feel like he should choose, play for mine. When he does choose mine, um, just I hope it goes well. Yeah. I, it won't. I mean, I guarantee that if he does go your way, there's no way that's going going to finish well. It doesn't have to finish well. He needs to get out, get away from her. Yeah. Um, Maybe don't do it mid ragu then. On to current events this weekend. Yeah. My favorite fighter in the world. Yes, the one I challenged. I didn't challenge him. Everyone's. I didn't challenge him. How many people have tweeted him now? I'm fucking sick the death of it. Will you stop fucking tweeting, Conor? I like him. I'm sorry. I love him. Oh. Right. Conor McGregor. Is fighting Eddie Alvarez for the lightweight UFC title where history can be made. History is already going to be made. It's at Madison Square Gardens. Shit. It is the first ever UFC fight in New York City. It's only just been legalized in New York. And in doing so, he well, they could rushed be... that one through, didn't they? Well, yeah, it's taken a while. Yeah. Should we get more cops on the street? No, we're busy legalizing oh, my... fighting. Oh my God, it's human cock fighting. I mean, you know, maybe his weed will be ready in about 50 years. Who yeah. knows? Anyway, what? Conor McGregor can be the first UFC fighter ever to hold two titles at the same damn time if he beats them. It's like when um, when Sting came over from WCW, oh, isn't it? It's like the ultimate warrior, isn't it, when he was the yeah. inter intercontinental title. And the heavyweight. And the heavyweight. So God. beat Hulk Hogan. Yeah. And then Hulk Hogan went off and made a porno. Anyway, Conor McGregor. I don't think we can say that anymore. I think he sued the fuck out of someone because yeah. they said that. Anyway, fuck you, Hulk Hogan. Suck my balls. Anyway. Right, yes. Conor McGregor. I actually McGregor. think that was one of the lines. <laughs> Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor. We, we may, might now get used in one of those montages where it goes, the whole word's talking about it. Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor. Conor. 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 You're and coming then they home, cut, Conor. Yeah, and then they cut to one of his lines where he go, I fuck, I don't fucking know who he is. And then it goes I don't know there. that guy. I don't know that guy. <sighs> We're going to have to cut all this out. Um, Why? So, what is interesting about this? Because is has he gone up a weight class? He's as gone you guys up a weight. So, all right, he's the 145 pound title holder. He's going up to 155. Last time he did that, didn't he get knocked the fuck out? No, he, he got oh. beat by a 170 pound Nate Diaz. Massive. Nate Diaz fights at lightweight, but he is a natural welterweight, 170 pounder. Right. He went and took them on again. Horrible stylistic matchup for him. He is durable, he's tough, he's got great boxing, he's good on the ground, he submitted him the first time round, he's got a chin from hell, he can't be knocked out. So it's sort of his strengths chin from hell. take away Conor McGregor's main strength. Conor McGregor's main strength is knockout power and movement and confidence. All of that was removed by Nate Diaz because he can take a fucking million punches and... He has got good boxing himself, and and he gets stronger as the fight goes on. Tough Eddie hell. Alvarez has got a similar talent, which is toughness. He's tough as fuck. Does he also have a jaw from hell. He's actually got a chin. He doesn't get knocked out easy. So, and another thing is, he's a very very good wrestler, which has been Conor McGregor's one of his weaknesses in the past when he fought, um, he fought it featherweight. So it is a bit worrying if you're a Conor McGregor fan. There's definitely a chance. 
he could lose this fight. Okay. If the, the other guy's got decent boxing, good movement, he gets tougher as the fight goes on, he's got a good chin, he's got cardio. So it's a it's a bad matchup for McGregor. It's so not an easy Con- fight. Okay, so this so Connor is the 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 incumbent. Right? Connor is the guy moving up a weight class to fight the light. But the, the strange thing is, Connor has actually got a longer reach mm-hmm. and he's actually bigger. Even though he's one coming up, he's actually bigger framed. Okay. So he's gonna have like a five inch reach advantage which is something he never had in the fight beforehand when he struggled so much. Is that so his reach advantage means that, that you're the other practicing guy, a punch? It means that the other what guy was that? No, I'm trying to work out if you're so, pun- if you're punching out, right? I'm yeah. trying to get my arm as far away. Does that mean that the, the other guy is going to be swinging? And the other guy is, is going to have 5 inches to make up for. So he's going to have to come inside the towards Conor McGregor, which is going to then potentially expose him. If the other I think if the other guy can wrestle him, wear him down, Take away some of that punching power because when you're wrestling, your arms get tired. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're not. You haven't got as much snap in your punches. It's gonna wear him down. Take him into the later rounds. That's the way to beat Conor McGregor. How Con- can Conor beat him? Conor McGregor is gonna have to come out, suck him in, suck him in, <laughs> boot, like beat the shit out of him. Yeah, basically, and just make sure that he can't get in there. Make sure he doesn't get wrestled. Stay away from the wrestling. Pick him off because he's because he's because he's got the jab and he's got the distance on him. He's going to have to pick him apart, land that left hook, and knock him clean left hook. out. That's. Do you still like Conor McGregor as much as the first day he came on the scene? Um, I think I like him more. Why? Because he stayed authentic. Uh, yeah, because if you look at his first ever interview um, he did with Ariel Helwani on the MMA Hour, yeah. he had nothing in the world. He didn't have a car. He didn't have a pot to piss in, in his own words. And he said, I'm going to be the world champion. Um, and he actually, I think very soon afterwards, he says, I, I'm, I'm already being a two-weight world champion in my previous organisation. Which was what? Um, I think it was Cage Warriors. Um, yeah. And he just said, I'm going to do it again. And he had the opinion that he's number one from day one. And now that he is number one, it sort of... Gets in your head, doesn't it? Not surprised, mate. Like, what, what do you expect? Feels you know like I mean? he's destined to be. So, so he's, he, he, his confidence is something that I think intimidates fighters before the fight. Uh, they say it doesn't. I don't think Nate Diaz was that intimidated, but I think 90% of fighters, when you, when you go up against someone in a fight and they have this tunnel vision, this belief that they are going to kill you, mm-hmm. it's bound to shake you a little bit. Yeah, but then... It's I bound mean, to make you question yourself, like, what does he know that I don't know. And the one thing, the one of the main problems is, is he's backed it up that many times now. And one of the things that would have freaked me out the most is in particular, before he fought Nate Diaz, he was like picking the round and telling you exactly how it was going to happen. And that is exactly how it happened. But it didn't with Nate Diaz though, did it? It didn't. Yeah. But he still came back and still beat him. He yeah. He still it- beat him anyway. Do you know what I mean? It was a close fight, but he beat him fair and square. A heavier guy, a bigger guy. Shouldn't have been anywhere near him really, but... But Nate did beat him the first time. He did, yeah. And it's, so he is beatable. There's no fucking doubt about it. The thing is, I'm kind of discounting because Alvarez has got good knockout power. So it is a possibility that Alvarez could knock Connor out. But I just don't see it happening like that. It's you sort not, of don't want it to. You don't want it to happen like that, do you? No, I want to see history being made. I'm, I'm the kind of person I want greatness. I want to see someone do something that's never been done before. Doesn't that happen either way, though? I mean, isn't what's no, the other not guy's both name? titles on the line. What's the other guy's name? Eddie Alvarez. So Eddie Alvarez, surely he's making his own history. It's just that we don't know that story as much, right? So it's like, well, oh, he, fuck he's, him. Got, he's got some history as well. I mean, he's known as the underground king because he went and fought in every other organisation other than the UFC and became champion of all of them. Shit. And now he's in the UFC, he's champion now, and he's beaten some really hard guys. But yeah. that being said, I've got a feeling Connor's going to do it. Like, So who do you think's going to win? Who's taking it? Conor McGregor, mate. I'm just going to... Boring, isn't it? <laughs> Yawn, winning all the fights. Da, da, da. No, yeah. you genuinely might lose this one, but I'm just going to say that uh, the straight punches, the timing, the movement, the left hook, bangs him out, knocks him out, lifts two world titles for the first time ever in UFC history. I'll stay up if you do. All right, all right yeah, we'll yeah. do that. I'll text you. Do you, you normally you. snack yeah. whilst watching the fights? Like, I, should I get I, some I, snacks in? Or? Yeah, I kind of just snack whenever I'm awake. How do you do this? Okay. I, I just breathe and I'm snacking and I'm drinking. and So yeah, we'll do <laughs> this that. This time of the week is the, the least you eat ever. Pretty much. It's the only time I don't eat. Like, yeah. I just graze. I'm like a horse. I just, yeah. So, all right, we'll do that. Yeah. 
tweet out and stuff like that. Perfect. Get rid of that logo. I don't, I don't care. Get rid of that shit fight logo. Fight you for it. People keep saying that. Fight you for it. Yeah, you wouldn't the, fight me for nothing. The second it. most tweets I get a week. <laughs> Is it? When's the podcast out? That, Change your logo. Shit. When's the podcast out? <laughs> Change your logo. All Fuck right. off. Change the fucking logo. In the end, uh, no logo. That was good. I learned so much about diving during this podcast. I hope people found it interesting because it's kind of a bit for me. I'm just sort of explaining stuff I already know. I came up with one more question in that time. What was the food like out on the rigs where oh, you're working? I just, I really, I, I, that's going to bug me otherwise. Uh, it's absolute shit. Like, it doesn't matter where you are. I mean, the thing is, I like proper home cooked meals, so I'm never going to be happy, am I? It just sounds like a terrible lifestyle choice for you. It just sounds like you just It wasn't basically... suited for me. Some lads love it. Some lads are totally perfect Ooh. for it. Not me. Not one of them. That's why I'm here on the finest ship in the world Good talking point. to you fine people. Yeah. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Like the video. Subscribe. iTunes, YouTube, all that shit. And we'll see you later.